glory to God. Amen. So by the grace of God, uh, we'll bless the name of the Lord. We've been looking at sensitivity to the spirit. Marco Texo Blediatro Zebronia is walking through your back. See the spirit of the living God. Your back area. I'm seeing the power of God going through somebody's back area right now. I'm seeing the power of God going through somebody's back area. The power of God is walking through your back. The power of God is walking through your back. The Lord said your rights will not be denied. Lembronia, he said, my shishelo, my shirupi, au guadure bere. He said, your rights will not be denied. Your rights will not be taken away from you. Lebro, therefore, a laborer is worthy of his wages. I said, law, you will surely receive your wages. Say, the spirit of the living God, your rights will not be denied. Thank you, Jesus. We we'll live to praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. About the grace of God today. We go on to the second part, which is paying attention to details. Remember the title of this particular uh, factor that we've been looking at is sensitivity to the spirit, paying attention to details. Can you remember? So uh, we'll be looking at paying attention to details. Now I want us to understand that uh, a, a, a lot of times the almighty God, you know, in his leadings to uh, believers, he gives us um he gives us general leadings now general leadings ladies and gentlemen general leading comes when ladies and gentlemen god speaks to us most times it starts from the general before he enters the specific anybody that wants the specific without firstly operating the general you may never know what the specific is you must understand the pattern of god most times god starts from the general and when God starts from the general, it is when you are faithful with the general that the specific will be committed into your hands. The Bible says, he that is not faithful in what belongs to another man, who will commit into his hands his own. Can you see it? So your own specifically does not come until you have been faithful in that which belongs to other man. Imagine, for instance, you start your own bank. Most people that started banks, go and check it. A lot of them were bankers. They have moved from one bank to the other. They are working this bank, working that bank, working. Do you understand? And they have been faithful. They have learned so many principles. And then they now come to the place where they feel, you know what? Can't we start our own? Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So you, most times, you must have been faithful in that which belongs to others before God commits your own to you. So general leading comes before the specific. Every believer must have that at the back of, of his mind. Uh, somebody say, can't God just tell me one thing I need to do? One way I need to go? That person I need to meet. Can't God just speak to me directly? Please understand, the ones he tells you to do generally, do you do it first? Uh, he told you to walk in love. Do you walk in love generally to people? He told you to pay your tithe. Do you do it? He told you to uh, not forsake the assembly of God's people. All general instructions, do you carry them out? If you are, ladies and gentlemen, delinquent in general instructions, you may never be able to prevail in the specific. So that's why God always starts with the general. And I must let you know that in God's pattern of leading through the general, there is the element of mystery. Now this is where a lot of people, you know, find it very difficult working with God. The leading of the Spirit most times comes general. It doesn't come specific. So most times God may tell you, you know what, go to Lagos. Then you get to Lagos. Maybe you are looking for a wife. But it is when you're in Lagos that your wife will meet you. But God didn't tell you that in, in Lagos there are so many millions of young sisters and young brothers. Uh, or whatever. You know, God may not tell you, okay, Shade is your wife. Or the Shade I'm talking about is in so and so place. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Most times he just tells you, go this way. It is after you have obeyed the first instruction that you are qualified for the next one. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. So the first instruction most times is general. I remember when Bragbili Akone was looking for his wife. God told him, go to the teaching hospital. He went there. <laughs> and do you understand what I'm talking about? And then it was when he was there that God now led him to the person he finally married. His wife is a medical doctor. Sister uh, uh, Shade um, Akone. If somebody catch on what I'm talking about. But after you have taken the first step, that is when you are qualified for the next. So please understand the general leading of God comes first. And then we need to obey it. And then there is the element of mystery when you are in the general leading. Now this will answer many questions in the heart of many of us. Because you see a lot of us, we find ourselves in, it, it almost looks like, 
you know, a limbo where you don't even know where you're going. You don't even know what is happening. Is God still leading me? I'm not, you, do you understand what I'm talking about? It's as though whatever. But you know one thing? God is leading you. God is leading you. The leading of God most times, there is an element of mystery in it. Look at it. In Genesis chapter number 12, starting from verse number 1, the Almighty God said unto Abraham, He said, come out of your, come out of your, uh, 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 come out of your country and out of your kindred and out of your father's house to the land I will show you. Can you see it? To the land I will show you. Now, Abraham came out. When you read that Bible verse, you will think it was express. And you know, in chapter 13 and verse 14, the Bible says, And after that Lord had departed from Abraham, the Lord said unto him, Lift up now your eyes, east, west, north, and south. He said, he said, this land which you see, he said, will I give unto you. Now, God said, come out to the land I will show you. And God did show him. He did show him. You know, that's chapter 13, verse 14. The Bible said, for this land which you see, will I give you. God did. But a lot of us would think it was that express. And it was that simple. It wasn't like that. How can you tell somebody to come out of his father's house and you gave him no direction? You just said he should go. How? In Genesis chapter number 20, when Abraham was standing before Abimelech, Abraham now gave us an understanding of what happened between that Genesis chapter 12 and Genesis chapter 13. Abraham said, you know, when he was standing before Abimelech, and uh, verses 14 and 15, Genesis chapter 20, verses 14 and 15, Abraham said unto Abimelech, he said, when God caused me to wander from my father's house, he was just wondering, <laughs> you know, wondering, how you are wondering, not knowing, not having direction, just wondering the wilderness. Or, and, but you know, as he was wondering, it was God that was leading. God was making him to go this way, go that way. No, he didn't hear an express voice, so he called him wandering. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. At the end of the day, he wandered to the spot God wanted him to wander to. And God said, now lift up your eyes. Can you see this land? This is the land I, I said I will, I, will, I will give you. So you, you wouldn't have gotten there without God making him, take, ordering his steps into that place. I don't know whether somebody understands what I'm talking about. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So Abraham called it wandering, but you see, in the mind of God, it was his leading. Glory be to God in the highest. 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 May God bless somebody quickly before the end of today. I see dollars fly. By the power of the Spirit of God, receive it now. By the anointing of God, I say, receive it. It is done. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So the Bible made us to understand that, you know, Abraham called it wandering, but it was God. So there's an element of mystery when you're working with God. You just receive a general instruction. Come out to the land I will show you. It's too general. Where is the specific land? You just keep going. You really don't know. But you know one thing? It will take you into the specific when you obey the general. Do you understand? Obey the general instruction is the highway to locating the specific fulfillment. Glory be to God in the highest. Now you will see God also, ladies and gentlemen, in, uh, in 1 Samuel chapter number 16. The Almighty God said unto Samuel the prophet, Leopardo Cetredi Gaboza. If people are sleeping in this place, please stand up and leave this place. I want people that are awake and charge in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody I'm charging the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Glory be to God. Now in 1 Samuel chapter number 16, the Bible said, And the Almighty God said unto Samuel, He said, Fill up your horn and go to the house of Jesse, the Bethlehemite. He said, And anoint me a king, therefore have provided me a king among his children. Wow. <laughs> God could mention Jesse. God could mention Bethlehem. But God did not mention the name of David. <laughs> is somebody catching what I'm talking about? That is a general instruction. Am I right? So Samuel got to the house of Jesse. And then Eliab stood in front of Samuel. <laughs> chapter, uh, uh, chapter 16, verse 6. The Bible said, and Samuel said, he says, surely, can you see, this is a man with heavy prophetic anointing. That the Bible said his word did not fall to the ground. Eh? Heavy prophetic red eye, mighty on him. The man says, surely the Lord's anointed is before me. He, he, he almost missed God. And then the next slide, the Bible said, and the Lord said, no. He said, this is not the word. I have not chosen him. He said, look not at his countenance, nor the height of his stature. He said, for I have not chosen him. For man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So God said, no, this is not the one. Then the Abinadab, the next second one came. And like that, like that, all the seven sons of uh, Jesse passed. And the Lord did not choose any of them. And then <laughs> someone now asked Jesse, have you not any other child apart from these ones? And Jesse said, there is one. 
is in the wilderness. The Lord said, there's somebody under the sound of my voice. The time has come for that one call you to be discovered. Yeah. I said, Elio Pradia, ah, I think your email will tear the heavens open. Yeah. I think your email will tear the heavens open. Le Pradia, for marriage, the time has come for you to be discovered. Yeah. I said, for that business exploit, the time has come for you to be discovered. Yeah. I said, for that elevation, the time has come for you to be discovered. Yeah. I said, right now, even for that breakthrough, the time has come for you to be discovered. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. There was nobody. There was nobody. There was nobody else. And then the man was as his dear no other child. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody will fail so that you will be chosen. Everybody will go down so that you will go up. I said there will be a relegation for others so that elevation may find you. I'm talking to somebody here. It's your time to be located. I say it's your time to be located by the power of the spirit of the living God. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Uh, uh, Papa, fear not your son will be located for that elevation right now and they will surely make that journey write it down papa your son will make that journey and you will rejoice thank you jesus thank you. this is done glory be to god in the highest is somebody catching what god is talking about so what are we saying ladies and gentlemen the bible made us to understand this very strategically uh, that uh the bible made us to understand that god you see i thought god should have if you can mention the name of jesse you can mention the city where jesse was bethlehem why can't you just tell him there is a boy there called David. I, why, why should Samuel almost miss it? I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. So no matter how anointed you are, there is still the element of mystery in the leading of God. So don't, don't forget that. No matter the weight of the anointing of God on your life, you may think this is the way at times. You just, but somehow the Spirit forbids you. Somehow you have a restraint. Somehow circumstances will lead you out. Somehow, do you get what I'm trying to say? You try it out. Somehow you do this. Somehow you, do. you see, at times, the Holy Spirit leads that way. Now, some believers want it. God just tell them specifically. I'm not saying God doesn't say, say the specific. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Please understand, I'm not teaching that. But I'm telling you how God leads. And I'm telling you what I had personally experienced. And I'm telling you how many apostles and many leaders, have, I mean, so many men of God have experienced this. Bishop Berepo started his church in Kaduna in a place and they started like that, and they were building, and they were very happy, erecting a mighty structure, but they were having issues. And then suddenly, he lacked peace about it. God said, I'm not there. The man left it. He, he, he immediately, they went to another place. When he told the church, ah, they have invested so much money there. But God said, I'm not there. Bishop said, till he dies, he will never go there. He will never cross that place. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand where the place of the leading of the... You see, the, there is a element of mystery. At times... Is leading you this way. It is only when you get to the final point that you know. The Canaan land that they have today. Bishop said, if not for the fact that there was no GSM, they wouldn't have discovered Canaan land. When they were leaving Raji Oba to go and look for, you know, they were searching for land, checking different places. And somebody now told them of, of this land, called Kena, um, the land that is called Canaan land today. And they were going there. Bishop said the distance was so much that, ah, in his car, he said he was so disgruntled. He was saying, look, ah, Look, bush and bush and bush, and they were traveling and traveling. He said, Look, come. We, I, don't, I, I didn't tell them that we are looking for a farmland. We are looking for where a church will be situated. This is not. He, 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 but for the fact that pastors have gone ahead of him and vehicles have gone ahead of him, and he was coming by, he said, I Could have called them that they should turn back. He said, But there was no GSN. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? He said, That was how he said, Okay, let's just get there. He said, They were traveling and traveling, and finally they got there. As Bishop stepped out of his car and he got to the place, the Holy Ghost said, this is the place. Now imagine if he has turned back. <laughs> is somebody catch what I'm talking about? You see, at times until it takes you to where he's taking you to, you may not hear that specific instruction. You might have thought, oh, this is the one, that is the one. You want to turn back? You want? Uh, they have considered some other options. Bishop was already thinking, okay, let's go to the one we saw in so-so place then. Let's, let's rather, do you understand what I'm talking about? But you see, <laughs> the Lord just kept pushing him on. He kept pushing him on. He kept pushing him on. He kept pushing him on. So ladies and gentlemen, that element of mystery can exist in the leading of God at times. Uh, I don't know whether you have gone through such in your life. And you feel so bad that, why is it that I think it's this one or I think it's that one? Ladies and gentlemen, it's not only you. Here was Samuel. He went through it as well. Ladies and gentlemen, here was Abraham who, who caught the leading of God a wandering. Just wandering around the wilderness, not knowing where I was going. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, at times it could be like that. But you know what? God is the one that is guiding you. 
it will surely take you even to a saver ball in Jesus name and by the mercy of God in the name of Jesus may by the spirit of God as I'm speaking right now may God take you to the center of your answer right now from today in the name of Jesus that mystery is converted even unto mastery for you you come to that place of your answer in the name of Jesus Amen. and everyone in Jesus name will rejoice even with you for your answers glory be to God in the highest so we see this element of mystery uh, uh, as it comes to God giving us general instructions, except God didn't give you general instructions, that's when you won't see this element of mystery. You do you understand what I'm talking about? But you see, as you keep going, somehow, someday, you will get to where you are going. And then you will know that this is what the Lord is saying, and this is where, and then the timing, and all of that. You, some, you can even miss it on the note of timing, and all of that. But at the end of the day, you will get it straight, in Jesus' name. Glory be to God in the highest. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? If you are hearing me, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. So now, when it comes to moving from the general to the specific, this element of mystery lays instructions on hosts to pay attention to the Holy Spirit. It is only the Holy Ghost that can show you the details. Please understand, the general is not sufficient. Many people are operating with general instruction. And general instruction will always leave you with mysteries. But please pay attention with to the holy ghost take some time to pray take some time to pray when you pray when you spend time praying a whole lot do you understand even if you still have the element of mystery it will be reduced you will see yourself operating more ladies and gentlemen with some certain degrees of accuracy is somebody catch what i'm talking about because you take some time to pray when you are reading the word of god the word of god will guide you you know what the spirit of god will guide you look at what he said in matthew chapter 22 and verse 29 Mary 22 and verse 29. The Bible says you heard. That means you commit error. He said because you do not know the scriptures and the power of God. Now the power of God is the spirit of God. We know that. You know what he's talking about? When you don't know scriptures. That is when we are talking about the leading of God through scriptures. That's part of it. You see, you will always be committing errors when you don't know. And then when you don't know the power of God. And of course, to see, to see wondrous things in scriptures, it takes prayer. That man said, open my eyes, O Lord, that I may behold wondrous things in thy law. That means he was praying. And to... To, ladies and gentlemen, function in the spirit of the Lord, it takes prayers. So prayer is the key that opens the, mi the mystery of the world and the mystery of the spirit, even to a man in the leading of the in in in, in, lead, in, in leading in, in leadings in life. If somebody catch what I'm talking about, prayers will always open it up. It will reduce your the number of years in the wilderness if you can pray. You will discover the straight way easier and 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 and, and earlier. If somebody catch what I'm talking about, when you take some time. To pray in the Holy Ghost mostly. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Glory be to God in the highest. Glory be to God in the highest. I see the leading of God catapulting you to your answers by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. So, see what I will say, ladies and gentlemen. We need to pay attention to details, to pray, to understand details so as to locate the specifics. Now, every instruction of God carries details. Though. Most people just carry out the instruction broadly and generally. They don't pay attention to the details of the dealings of God. Please understand that there is something called the secret thoughts of God. <laughs> they are not in the open. It is only when you are, ladies and gentlemen, a very attentive person. When you are a detailed person. When you are somebody, ladies and gentlemen, that have your heart entrenched in understanding intricacies of matters. That you can pay attention to those secret thoughts of God. God has secret thoughts. Hey! Hey, don't ever forget that everybody, God has secret thoughts. Ah, I've been privileged, ladies and gentlemen, to see into the heart of God and to see into the secret thoughts of God a couple of times. God has secret thoughts. I pray today that you will always understand the secret thoughts of God in your life. And concerning your children, every, every parent, you will know the kind of child you have in the name of Jesus. You will know, you will know the secret thought of God concerning that child. It will be revealed to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of God. As I'm speaking, I'm seeing the veil open and people being able to understand the secret thoughts of God. Amen. Whatever is in the deep heart of God, in the depths, in, is in, the Bible said the deep call it unto the deep. That means there are matters that are deep. By the power of the spirit of the living God, the Holy Ghost will extract them out for you right now. You will begin to operate in the deep. You will not swim in the shallow waters again. And then you will not swim in the shallow waters again. 
you will be operating in the name of Jesus. And do you know that heavy ships that are like 10 stories down, they can't, they can't sail in streams. They operate, ladies and gentlemen, in the ocean. Heavy ocean liners, they, they operate where you, you have about three, three kilometers down, even the sea, so that it can accommodate their weight. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, God needs to move you from shallow waters into deep waters. So that, ladies and gentlemen, dimensions that are bigger than you may come upon your life. I prophesy today that enlargement of heart comes inside of you. To accommodate even the largeness of his purposes. To accommodate the largeness of his heart. I'm under a strong move of the spirit. To the sensitive, you understand that the tide of the spirit has changed. And speaking in the power of the spirit of God. The Lord is opening up your heart. 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 There is an electric supernatural connectivity between your heart and the heart of God. That from today in the name of Jesus, as it is in the heart of God, it is in your heart. As it is in the mind of God, it is in your mind. That supernaturally speaking, you will be connecting with what God has in mind even for the present in your life. You will not run out of time. You will not run out of his will. You will not run out of his purpose. By the power of the spirit of God. This is your portion forever. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Lift up holy hands and give him praise. Father, we just want to say thank you. Blessed is your name. In Jesus name. God has secret thoughts. We need to pay attention to the details. Amen. Now look at it. There was a general instruction in Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 1 and verse number 7. Jesus said, And thou shalt receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon thee. Then shall thou be my witness in all Judea, Samaria, you know, all Jerusalem, and even to the heartmost ends of the heart. Am I right? And then Jesus said, Go ye therefore into the world, and do what? And preach the gospel. Now, and in Matthew chapter 24, verse 12, he said, Then shall this gospel be preached in all the heart. So please understand, the gospel is meant to go around. The instruction is, Go ye therefore into the world. Matthew chapter number 28, verses 18 and 19. Go ye therefore into the world and preach the gospel. Now, every believer is supposed to go around the world to preach. That's too general an instruction. Now, that means preach everywhere. Brother Paul the Apostle, however, in Acts chapter number 16, from verse number 6, the Bible says, When he came, unto uh, Phrygia, the Holy Ghost did not allow him to preach. Ah, he came unto, you know, Galatia, the Holy Ghost did not allow him to preach. Even the region of Asia, the Holy Ghost did not allow him to preach. Ah, from there he moved to Mysia, the Holy Ghost did not allow him to preach. He sailed. From there, ladies and gentlemen, he went to Bithynia, the Holy Ghost would not allow him to preach. Ah, and from there, okay, he finally now went to Tras. Can you see from one city to the other? These are cities selling, paying their fare, doing everything. And the spirit was forbidding them. And then he got to trust. And then he saw the vision of a man of Macedonia saying, come to Macedonia and help us. Now, I thought there was a general instruction. Go everywhere and preach. Please understand, you need to pay attention to details. It is not just everywhere. Your profitability is not everywhere. Your profitability is in the specific leading of the spirit. <laughs> you may have the general. Please go for the specific. Oh, I'm talking to somebody here. Can somebody catch what God is talking about? So, we need to pay attention to the secret thoughts of God. There are so many times, ladies and gentlemen, we obey the general instruction, but because you don't pay attention to, to details, to the secret thoughts, ladies and gentlemen, the benefit of the general obedience we have given to the general instruction is not coming out. And it's like, God told me this, I did it. God told me to pay my tithe, I pay my tithe. God told me to come to fellowship regularly, I do. God told me to walk in love, I walk in love. God told me this, God told me that. But there is a specific instruction that you are not paying attention to. If somebody catch what I'm talking about, it is very important that you please look inwards. Look at it. Look at it. I want you to see something here. I want you to see something here. In Isaiah chapter number 51, and Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 2. Everybody pay attention. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse number 2. God says uh, concerning Abraham. He said, look at Abraham, even thy father, and Sarah, thy body. I called him alone. I increased him and I blessed him. Now see, God said, look at Abraham, thy father, and Sarah, thy mother, thy body. I called him alone. I called him alone. Can everybody say it again? I called him alone so that means god called him alone but let's look at what happened when god called abraham in genesis chapter number 12 starting from verse number one 
And the Lord has said unto Abraham, Come out of your country, out of your kindred, and out of your father's house, and uh, I to the land which I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thee great, and I will bless those who bless thee, and those who cause thee will I cause, and in thee shall all the nations of the heart be blessed. End of verse 3. Now, verse number 4. And Abraham departed. Can you see? That's obedience. And he went with Lot, his cousin. Now, please understand. God said, I called him alone. Why did he carry Lot along? God did not call him with Lot. <laughs> and Lot was a problem to him all through the journey. From that moment God called him, it, was, it has been Wahala in the life of Abraham. I'm telling you, that was when Wahala happened to, in the maximum in the life of Abraham. That was when famine began to affect him and he deflected to Egypt. Verse 10. And they collected his wife and he began to lie. And everything started happening to him. Do you understand? And he came up. And then the hard men of Abraham and the hard men of Lot they started fighting. And this and that. Until Abraham was able to separate with Lot. Genesis chapter 13 verse 14. And after that Lot has departed from Abraham, the Lord said unto Abraham, Look, lift up your eyes, eastward and north and south. The land which you see will I give unto you. God did not say until Lot had departed. Please, there are some Lot in your life that God did not call with you. You will never locate the ultimate of his plan until you depart from that Lot. There are some details you need to pay attention to. God said, I call him alone. Abraham did not pay attention to it. Please understand, all of us are inside this thing. There is a secret thought of God, ladies and gentlemen, that we need the details of, of, of God's plan that we need to pay attention to. How has he called you? How does he want you to do what he has called you to do? Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Every man that succeeds in, in life, that succeeds in the things of the spirit, they are men that pay attention to details. If you are a man that will succeed in the hand of God, you must pay attention to details. Look at David. Nobody will find his enemy in human history and never kill his enemy. Show me one person that found his enemy and did not kill his enemy. Everybody that found his enemy killed his enemy now. <clears throat> I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. Everybody that found his enemy did what? Killed his enemy. Now, David had two opportunities in life to kill, to kill Saul. Saul was sleeping one day. David and his men went there. He served and said, oh God, just allow me strike him once. Just once. The Bible said the Lord caused a deep sleep. To come on, so somebody would have said that's a move for the spirit. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. To allow me to completely finish him. And then you got to his side like this, he was sleeping. You just one arrow like this, just cut off his head or pierced through his heart. You know what the servant said? He said, I will not strike twice. You know, they are warriors. So they know where the jugular vein is. Where they put it like this, the person is there. Oma, Oma, Tojo, Rondojo, Kuni, straight. Do you understand what I'm talking about? They are warriors, they are experts in killing. The man said, just once. He said, he said, and all this battle is over, and then you become king. <laughs> the Bible said, and the heart of David is smoted. He said, how will I kill the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? Do you understand what I'm talking about? That means he was paying attention to this. And you know one thing? He's not in any scripture like that. As at that time. If we say, but the Bible said, taught no man anointed and do my prophet no harm. It was David that wrote it. <laughs> that, is in, that is the book of Psalms. Psalm 105, verse 15. Is some, uh, verses 14 and 15. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? How did David know? He's a man that fellowship with the Holy Ghost. Then the Bible says, his heart smote him. That means there is an inner working of the Spirit. Nobody knew that he was receiving a dealing on the inside. Ah, I don't know if somebody understands what I'm talking about. His heart smote That's the Spirit. The Spirit did something within him. Oh, come on. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? That's exactly what we're talking about. Paying attention to the inner dealings of, of the Spirit. There was a time David was sleeping in one room and Saul came into that hole. The hole has two rooms. And Saul went to the other room. He could have went to the room of David and met David there. And that could have been the death of David. Why did Saul go to the other room? The Bible says, and Saul persecuted David every day. But the Lord did not hand him over. The Lord did not deliver him into his hands. I don't know why I'm speaking to you. It doesn't matter how hard the witches and wizards of this world are incited against you. The Lord will not deliver even your progress into their hands. Amen. By the mercy of the living God, I say your advancement will always rise above even the barricades they can mount. Amen. By the power of God, they will never be able to restrain you. Amen. You are unrestrictable. Amen. I say you are unrestrainable. Amen. You are unbarricadable. Amen. I say you are unimpedable. Amen. By the power of the spirit of the living Amen. God, you are unhinderable Amen. because the anointing is at work in your life. Amen. 
Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? And David went and caught the cloth, the edge of the cloth of David and of Saul. Yet David did not kill him. Do you understand? Now you know one thing. God was looking at David. That you pay attention to my secret thought. Don't worry. Uh, when you uh, you know, <laughs> David later killed Uriah and collected Beersheba. And then God told him that he will raise somebody in his house against him in judgment. And Absalom, he said, and the person will sleep with all his wife. And you know that was what Absalom did. Now, Absalom also could have killed David. Because David killed Raya. But God remembered that David had mercy on Saul. God said, no, I will not hand you over to Absalom. I will not hand you over to Absalom. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And God restored him. So please understand, ladies and gentlemen, a man who pays attention to the inner dealings of God. You know, a lot of times, the, the, at times we're having some inner promptings. Don't do it. Don't, and then we move against the tide of the Spirit. Nobody knows that the Holy Ghost is dealing with us inside. But God knows, and you know. And his heart smote him, not his body. Only David, only David designed it. Oh, glory be to God in the highest. So every man needs to pay attention to what? To details. To the secret thoughts of God. What are the details we need to pay attention to? Let's look at some of the visions God gives unto us. And some certain essential details of visions. I'll just talk about four because of time. Uh, number one is this. Every vision that God ever gives you has certain details. Number one of it is that every vision deals with the who. <laughs> there is no way God will send you out. And it gives you a vision without you understanding the details of who are the ones this vision is to affect. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Now, he has called you into ministry as he called Paul. But you see, there must be some specific details. There must be some specific details. Do you understand what I'm talking about? There must be some specific details, just as we saw that go, I mean, going into all the world. But there are some specific details. Now, look at it. Look at it. The Lord Jesus Christ, when he was send his disciples out in Matthew chapter number 10. He said, go ye not to the house of the Samaritans, or to the house or not the way of the Gentiles, but only to the lost sheep of what? Of Israel. That was under the ministry of Jesus. That was the scope of his ministry. He understood comprehensively the syllabus of ministry handed over to him by God. That it does not extend beyond the perimeters of Israel. Do you understand me? As of his time. Now, outside his time, then he extends to the end of the world. In Matthew chapter number 15, from verse 22, the Syrophoenician woman come, came unto Jesus and was saying, please heal my daughter. She's grievously vexed of a devil. And Jesus said, I'm not sent to the Gentiles. I'm only sent to the Lordship of Israel. Can you remember? And uh, Jesus said, Even, we can't give the bread of children to dogs. The woman said, oh God, please remember, when children are hitting, bingo, still have access. He has access to crumbs. He said, please. And Jesus said, oh woman, great is your faith. He said, be it done unto you. The persistent will always be blessed. That's the secret of great faith. Glory be to God in the highest. Just join persistence with your faith. That faith automatically jumps into greatness. Glory be to God in the highest. So, if somebody catch what I'm talking about, if you wouldn't give up on that matter, you will finally press through. Some people are like, oh, I've tried it once, I've tried it twice. Please understand at times, if you don't give up, you will press through. Persistence is the secret of great faith. Glory be to God. At the end of the day, the other woman extracted from Jesus what was not in the ministry of Jesus. There is, it wasn't it is a miracle that was not meant for his time. That's you see, inside the word of God, is how much you know that you enjoy. The Bible talks about those who have tasted of the powers of the age to come. That thing was meant for the age after. But imported it into our into our time by faith. Ah, faith is terrible. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? It's terrible. It can deliver any blessing to you that is not meant for you at this time. And may I prophesy over somebody here. The height that you are not due for. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are receiving the benefits right now. You are enjoying the fruit right now. I see somebody sharing that testimony before the end of this month. It is done. Clap for Jesus. Are you catching what God is talking about? So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? The Bible made us to understand something very specific and something very unique here. That Jesus said, I know the people I'm sent to. It is to the Lordship of who? Of Israel. So every ministry God gives you, God has specificity with it. Look at it in Galatians chapter number 2 and verse number 7. But Paul the Apostle was speaking. He said, God who was mighty in the ministry, even of Paul, in the ministry of Peter, even to the circumcised, that means to the Jews, the same is effectual in my ministry to the Gentiles. That God who was mighty in the ministry of Peter, even to the Jews, the same is heavy. <laughs> the same is powerful. 
The same is effectual in my own ministry also to the world, to the Gentiles. So every time Paul came in contact with Jews, you know that was where his problem always came. Oh, come on, am I talking to living people here? Every time Paul came in contact with the Jews, it, that was where it was always problematic for him. In Acts chapter 21, he went back to Jerusalem. Now, wahala, maximum shishi for him. He went into prison and all that. Every time, anywhere, it is Jews always causing problems for Paul. Do you understand? Because God did not send him to the Jews. Oh, come on, am I talking to somebody here? But Peter successfully operated within the Jews because grace for the Jews was upon Peter. So what God has not sent you to do, there is no grace for it. The reason why you are struggling in that thing is because you are in a graceless field. Oh, come on, am I talking to somebody here? Your grace is in your place, it's in your field. You need to understand who and who God has sent you to. So if God sent you to the Gentiles, you will find grace there. So please understand, there are people God has sent you to in your business. Now, a caterer came to me. She said she wants to start catering, but she doesn't have money to, to get a shop, to, um, to sell it up. To do. She, by the time she counted that much, she would need. Of course, we all look at it, um, several millions, maybe even 10, 20 million to get a place in maybe, you know, a big store in, uh, um, in uh, 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 um, a big shop in, uh, in Keja now to do this, to do that, to furnish it, to, to buy this, to buy that, to, so that we put AC, put it. But I mean, maybe 20 million, 30 million. I said, if you don't have that money and you are praying and pray, God has not sent you for that kind of catering business. She looked at me like this. I said, there are other fees of catering business. And while I was counseling her, I said, do you know that you can go to schools? And she looked at me. Wow. I said, do you know you can go to schools? I said, do you know that schools feed their children? He said, yes. I said, go to schools and go and get the contracts. I said, imagine. If you go to a school and they say it's 750 that the people supplying their food supply, I said you can give them an offer for 680 or for 700. He said they will turn your way because your own is cheaper. Am I right? I said, and oh come on, am I talking to living people? He said, and then because of that, you will see yourself snatching the contracts and they will start giving you. I said, with 680, you can make something. He said, yes, he said it's true. She can do that. I said, you know, you know this school, so, so, so they have about 500 students. You know, so they have... So, so imagine if you're able to capture just 1,000 students. He said, and you start supplying food to them every day, and the patronage is there. He said, you know, if you're charging them even 650, that's 650,000. Let's say you're making 150, you know, per, 150 per, per meal, you know, I mean, per child. I said, that means you're making 150,000 naira as profit in a month. That means you're making three, four, five million. Wow. She look, I said, you don't need shop. <laughs> you don't need anything. You only need your kitchen that you have right now. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? And then package the food and then get Huba or whatever that will be helping you deliver in the school. Get people that goes with it and distribute. That's all. And her eyes were open. And then she left me and she was so happy. Ah, she gave me a precious gift and destiny opened up for her. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So I said, therefore, you are not sent to the general public. You are sent to children. Ah, she, 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 she understood the, that leading of God. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So you need to know the who, the people God sent you to. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You will see a pastor, Bimbo Dukoya, specializing on marriages and singles. And Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? She knows the people she, she is sent to. And she stood there and excelled in her time. So you will always excel when you understand the people God has sent you to. So understand, ladies and gentlemen, your audience. And the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. So the second leg of visions that everybody needs to understand is the where. Where has God sent you to? Please understand that there is a where. There is a geographical location. Now, please understand that uh, most, of course, God can extend you from one place to others. But most times, he locates you somewhere. And we need to be sensitive to know that per time. You see, we need to be sensitive to know that per time. Where has God sent me to? The Lord said unto Abraham in Genesis chapter 22. He said, Abraham, take your son, your only son that we love. He said, go and sacrifice him on Mount Moriah. To the, in the mountain that I will show you. In the land of Moriah. Can you see it? In the mountain that I will show you. It took Abraham three days to locate it. And there the consolation ram was. Abraham, if he had gone to another mountain, he would have sacrificed the boy and there would not be any consolation ram because he did not go specifically to where God said he wanted him to go. So every instruction of God carries a where. Please, your grace is in your place. 
Understand your place. Understand where God has called you into. The please understand in everything. God wants you to start a business. Yes, should I start in the Kurudu? Should I start on Lagos Island? Should I start this year? At times you can pay attention to these things. And then you begin to see people just dancing to your tune. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I remember, you know, uh, I, I, I mean, I remember, ladies and gentlemen, when I was looking for, when God spoke, spoke to me, he said, my son, go to Harvard. I was finishing year four. I was like, God, Harvard University? Ah, no, I've not finished year five. I'm still in year four. I'm still in year four. There's no way I can apply to Harvard now. I'm still in year four. Lord, you should understand. I, I these are that. And I kept, God, God kept quiet. The next day, my younger brother came to me. He said, the Lord spoke to me that I should tell you to apply to Harvard University for your master's. Ah, I said, that was what God told me yesterday. And I thought I won the argument. Okay, I will apply. So I started. Ladies and gentlemen, I told Harvard, I just finished my year four. I have not entered year five. I'm into a five-year course. And I made my application for master's without an existing first degree. When you obey God, miracles are on your way. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Without an existing first degree. And I put my year one to year four transcript. I put it there. And then Harvard looked at it. And they gave me admission. I was in year five. I had not finished. When my admission letter came with full scholarship. But you know one thing? When I, after, before I applied during the holiday, I was just walking around. I went to my lecturer's office. I said, this God, I said I should go to Harvard. This school fees, I check it. This school fees is too much. Ava spent about hundred thousand dollars on my program. I said, "Look, where will I get hundred thousand? Even one thousand dollars? There is no way I will get it then. Uh, me, that had only one trust then. Where will I get uh, what Ava University is talking about? So I said I was not going. I started looking for Scandinavian schools that were giving scholarship to African students. So third, third world countries. I was happy. So I, I began to apply, and I went to one of my. I made the application and sent the form to Scandinavian school. I didn't go to Harvard, I didn't apply to Harvard. I went to one of my lecturers. They had internet in their office then. I said, sir, I said, man, the God told me that I should go to Harvard University, but what I'm thinking of is probably if you can help me, you know, search for schools, man. Maybe since you have internet uh, free uh, from the university. Just help me search for schools in North America. You know, Harvard is in North America and Canada. I said, if you can see any school around that area, I said, maybe and that is willing to give scholarship, maybe I, I can go. The woman kept quiet looked at me after i finished talking the woman said you said god told you to go to harvard and you are saying that i should look for other schools for you he said go and to go and do what god told you to do that was what the woman that what hit me hard that was the last day i stopped contending with that instruction ladies and gentlemen i get got myself together i started posting all the letters i posted about 28 letters pro processing harvard university it costed me a lot, but we were doing it, and we we're doing it. And at the end of the day, I got my admission, and everything came through. Now listen, <sighs> ah, Leo Pradia, if you go where God told you to go, all miracles will follow you. The Bible says when he led them, Isaiah chapter number 48 and verse 21. The Bible says when he led them, they tasted not. The Bible says he caused water to flow for them. He cleaved the rocks and waters gushed out for them. Do you know the moment I started, miracles were happening. Somebody came and said, I will process Ava for you free. And the brother used his money for browsing and all that for me. And did not collect one dime. And they were posting the letters and doing everything. Free. Ladies and gentlemen, a fellow student like me. And friends, you know one thing? I got, we, I got the admission, I got everything. It was not time for me to go to Harvard. Where will, it, where will I get? Uh, I got the visa. The money I would use for visa, somebody gave me. Then it was time for me to go. Where will I get ticket fee after I got the visa? I came home September 2nd with the visa from the embassy. My younger brother said, where will you get money for ticket? I must leave Nigeria latest by September 12th. I must enter Harvard latest by September 12th. This is September 2nd. School resumes September 9. He said, where will you get money for ticket? I said, God, who brought me this far? We provide the money. I prayed for a woman. She wanted to sell a land. She was able to sell it. She paid me tight, 200000 I got ticket, 126000 One week, I was able to go. And I ministered. I got some money. I distributed it. I just had about 100 and something dollars in my pocket. That's how I left for school. I gave out all my clothes. I had cassettes. And I went. A couple came to meet me in Abad. They said, Pastor Femi, 
We heard of what you did in UI. And that's why we drove nine hours to come and see you. He said, they looked at me, you don't have any clothes. Let come, let's take you to, it will soon start getting very cold. Let's take you to stores where you can buy clothes. They took me there and they shopped. They said, pick everything you needed. I picked all and they paid. Another woman, I prayed for her husband. He got a visa. The woman was in Atlanta. He said, Atlanta, you are going to Harvard. I got your telephone number from my husband. He said, this, this city, oh, it can be cold. Oh. Let me buy some clothes for you. And the woman bought several clothes for me. Did not know my size and got my size right. Bought sweaters, bought everything, bought shirts, bought hood, bought gloves, bought everything for me. Ladies and gentlemen, and put uh, teller money in the whole package and ship it to me in Harvard. I got it again. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a miracle. The first day I landed in Harvard, I met a man who was a gardener. The man said, I don't know why I'm still waiting here. It was around 6 p.m. He's supposed to have gone home. I, I, he said, I don't know why I'm still here. He said, I, something just told me to, to just keep sitting down here. So I said, please, I'm a student. I'm from Africa. The taxi just dropped me now. I got admission here. And the man said, okay, let me see your admission. And he saw it. And the man called his boss. His boss said, use your card to open the door for him into the, into the res, all of residence. Now, you have to swipe the card in about, you have to swipe one, two, three doors for me to enter. Do you understand? So different doors. But your card is what swipes and opens the door automatically. So I could have slept in the cold out there. Ladies and gentlemen, not knowing how we enter into that hall. So the man just was using his card and advert had given me the room and all that. When I got there, the man looked at my my passport he saw that the name on the room was my name and then they opened the room for me and as the man was going the man went downstairs i went to meet him and i said i said please i just came from africa this is the clothes i have no toothbrush no cream no no nothing i said i got nothing i said i just where can i where is the grocery where i can buy things and at the same time a lady a white lady came and the white lady was asking the man please where is the grocery store here the man said oh okay he also needs all these things he said go with this lady and then go to the grocery store. We went to the grocery store. We bought everything I needed. The toothbrush, the toothpaste, and the little things I would eat and all that. I only had $150. We bought things worth $120. I walked in love towards that lady. I paid all she bought. And I paid all I bought. That was $120. We got to the hall. You know what? For one solid year, that lady was cooking my food. I didn't know how to cook. That lady just took it apart. He said, you came from Africa. You don't know anything here. He said, I'm going to help you. And that lady started. The news went everywhere that, oh, uh, what's her name? Oh, um, Theresa. No, not Theresa. Uh, Lorena. That Lorena was cooking pasta famous food. Lorena, <laughs> Lorena was cooking famous food. That boy from Africa. That's how myself and Lorena, you know, I, I mean, God blessed me. And uh, uh, that lady just started helping me with so many things. So many things I didn't know. You know, a lot of things online. I didn't know. Lorena would do the job for me. Lorena, uh, school, so, 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 she will fill the form. I needed to make a payment. Lorena does everything. She just, and she charged me nothing. Now, I, I needed to be buy food every week. That man I met, that gardener, took it upon himself and started all through my program in Harvard till the last day. That man started taking me to every week. He would take me to where I would buy food, gro grocery store, and where I would buy burger. I used to buy nine burgers. I would eat burgers and everything. I, I had a fridge in my room. That man took me where I would buy a fridge. He took me where I, I bought everything. And that man was coming to carry me every week to go. And then on Sundays, he would come and carry me to church every week. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a, those two people. I met them that same the first day. That was how God said. When God leads you, the Bible says they trust not. <laughs> the Bible says it caused waters to flow for them. The Bible says it cleaved the rock. And the Bible says there was a gushing effect. Ladies and gentlemen, that was how my studentship in Harvard was settled. My people were afraid. Femi, how will you hit? Who will take care of you? Who will this? Who will that? Jehovah has it all settled. I just went by faith. I just went by faith. I just went by faith. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how it works. When you walk in the Holy Ghost, when you walk in the power of the Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, thank God that I didn't go to any of the Scandinavian schools. Or went to any other school in Canada or North America. Thank God I went to the specific that he led me to. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So there is a specific place for you and your grace is in your place. Your consolation ram is there. Locate the place God wants. You see, he said, go you not down to Egypt. Genesis 26. So join in this land from verse 1. And I will be with you. Am I right? So and in that land, God prospered him. And then when it is time, 
when you are also overstaying the place, God will take you to another place. Abi, but please understand, stay there for the now that God has called you to be there. Glory be to God. Now let's go to number three, the when. We need to understand something about the when. This is something that is very crucial that I have in my heart to really share with everybody. Number three, leg. <clears throat> Details that we need to pay attention to when it comes to visions, when it comes to the leading of God. Please understand, number three leg is that you need to understand very, very clearly that the timing of God is as important as the plan of God. If a man gets the plan of God right and you miss out on the planning and the timing of God, it will be as though that plan is, ladies and gentlemen, a nullity. It will be as though that plan is false and it will be as though God never spoke to you. Listen to me. The timing of God is as important as the plan of God. The Bible says that uh, in Galatians chapter 4 verse 4, when the fullness of time came, God sent his only begotten son. That's the greatest move of God as at that time, sending Jesus to the heart. God, ladies and gentlemen, did not see, the, he didn't consider the millions and probably the hundreds of millions dying and going to hell during that time. And because of that, he quickly hastened it up. No, no, no. It was when the fullness of time came. God, ladies and gentlemen, has subjected the governance of his operations on the heart. Under, ladies and gentlemen, the concept of timing. Never you forget that. In Ecclesiastes chapter number 3 and verse number 1, the Bible says everything that happens in this world happens at a time God has set for it. That is how a translation puts it. And one says there is a time for everything and for every purpose there is a season. That is what your own translation says, King James. He said, but everything that happens in this world happens at the time God has set for it. That means God has a timing for everything. Your marriage carries a timing. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking to somebody here. That job, that breakthrough, that business, that move, that plan, that vision God gave you, it has a timing. There are some miracles, ladies and gentlemen, that are time-bound. There is no way you can move outside the, the plan of God and run ahead of God and never be able to get it. Most times when we have the revelation of His will. Now, two things you need to understand in the prophetic, if you ever want to be established. Divine assignment, or divine, sorry, divine revelation is not divine implementation. There are two different things. Divine announcement, ladies and gentlemen, is not divine establishment. <laughs> announcement is different from establishment, and revelation is different from implementation. The fact that God shows you doesn't say the time for the implementation has come. And the fact that God announces it to you, a virgin shall conceive, does not say the time, ladies and gentlemen, of the establishment of that has come. It still took about 1,500 years or 400 years or so for that thing to come to pass. Who oh, come on, am I talking to God's people? Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So Isaiah prophesied that, but it still took many years for it to come to pass. So the fact that God has said it doesn't say it is now. Ah, I have been in that kind of a mess before. And so God has said, oh yeah, immediately, oh yeah, oh yeah, everybody, oh yeah, oh yeah. And then you take a step, you suffer losses. You won't suffer losses again. I've suffered losses in some transactions that I went back God, but I thought you showed me. And I said, no, the father I showed you, this is that this is the time to take off. <laughs> is somebody got you I'm talking about? You should have waited for me to lead you and to guide you. I don't know who I'm talking to here. You will never rush into a loss anymore. Yes. Ken Egan said, it is better to be slower than God than to be faster than God. Ah, from experience, he said he has learned it. That every time you move ahead of God, you are on your own. <laughs> but even when you are slower, that God is already moving, you didn't move. You are still waiting to watch. Is it when you are slow? Ah, he said he has discovered that it's better. Kenegin will tell his church, God, God showed me that we are going to be the great auditorium here. It's so so play. Everybody will be like, okay, we have gotten that. We are let's start. Kenegin will not, three years, he's not even saying anything about it. <laughs> Until God now gives him the move. And when God, God, when that move starts, the church will not even spend a dime. Everything is built. No stress on anybody. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So it's good to be sensitive to the timing of God. For everything you want to do, the timing of God is very important. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The timing of God is very important. The timing of God is very important. Most times when I have a dream and God shows me something, I say, ah, this is the time for this thing. Let's go. When I wanted to buy a generator, I saw it in a dream. <laughs> Grandma told me, say, you will not buy a past my neighbor. I will never forget that one. Ah, when I was preaching on Wednesday, the Lord spoke to me. He said, he said the calling of heaven is part of it. He said, and grandma is watching the service. Uh, she, she watched the service on Wednesday. <laughs> Glory be to God in the highest. So, you know, God 
Grandma said, you will not, uh, you will not buy a pass my neighbor. My God will buy more than I pass my neighbor for you. Ah, so I had a dream and I saw me carrying a weight. And then somebody came and helped me to carry the weight. And I'm like, ah, so I woke up. God said, now, your, your weight of, how do you get money for this generator? He said, it's been carried. He said, go and move now. I just moved by faith. I said, brother, don't say, where are they selling big generators? On, I came to the recession. Unknown to me, a, a woman was sitting there. And the woman said, ah, he said, Mekano, he said, he's your friend of my husband. She was the wife of a commissioner. He said, uh, I can take you there. I said, Mommy, can we go there tomorrow? He said, yeah. So we went. Mekano said, well, for the sake of this woman that brought you, I will sell you so, so, so million. I said, please give us invoice. They gave us invoice. But there is no account number there. I said, please put your account number. So we will not say it's just because there is no account number. That's why we didn't pay. So Mekano used his jeep to carry us back home. And they brought me to office. I got to office. I went. I said, God, I've gone to tell them that by tomorrow I'm paying. I said, Lord, money must show up now. I put the invoice on my table and I continued ministry. And lo and behold, somebody came to see me. People were coming to see me and never took off light. A particular man came in. And we were talking. He said, ah, see how you are sweating. He said, there is no light. Unknown to me, the man took the invoice. It was in a jacket and the man was using it to blow himself. And he read it. And then we were talking. I said, I went somewhere in the morning and all that. And then we continued talking and then we finished. And then I ministered to the man and the man left. At the close of the day, we're not going home. I said, Brother Tosin, please, where is the invoice? Maybe it was the Pastor Tosin. I said, but I thought I put it in my office. We're looking for it. Pastor said, no. He said, I saw so 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 man that came. He said, I saw, and it's like when the man was going downstairs, downstairs, it's like he carried the invoice. He said, the invoice is red color. It's like, I said, ah, how can the man carry the invoice? Ladies and gentlemen, the man stole the invoice from my table. <laughs> Only for the next day, the driver of the man came with a teller of the money paid. <laughs> fully paid. That's the generator we have in the office now. Oh. So, you see, when, and now I was sharing testimony before the wife of the commissioner, I said, you know, when we went there yesterday, man, I did not have the money. The man said, so you didn't have the money and you took me there? No, I said, you see, it was you that didn't see it spiritually. We had the money spiritually. <laughs> now faith is the substance of things over. The evidence of things not seen. Am I talking to somebody here? So, what are we saying? <laughs> What point am I? <laughs> I think we are talking about uh, the when, right? Mm -hmm. So when I saw that vision, I know God's help has descended. I know this is the when to move. Oh, come on. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? I saw that dream of somebody taking that heavy weight from me. So it's good to understand the when of God oh, for everything you want to do. When you go at God's own timing, you never miss out on God. I pray for you today that you will never miss out on God's timing Amen. in Jesus' name. Then the last leg I'll talk about today is the leg uh, of uh, the owl. The owl. The what? The owl. So we have, ladies and gentlemen, the owl as the fourth leg. Now, you must understand, ladies and gentlemen, that the owl is also very important like all others. You must understand the owl to carry out God's instructions for your life. You must understand the how God, God, to carry out what God has called you to do. Many times God called us to achieve some certain things and because people lack the how, those things, they fail in their hands. I you know what the how, you know, calls for. It calls for, ladies and gentlemen, the operations of wisdom. Wisdom always answers the question, how? In 1 Kings chapter number 3, Solomon was asking the Lord, when God said, ask me anything, I will give you. Verse 7, Solomon said, for how shall I judge these people? Give me a wise and discerning heart. That means the question will always, the wisdom will always answer the question how. How do I go about it in life? How do I turn this 10,000 naira into 1 million naira in one year? Wisdom will answer it. Wisdom always answers the question how. No one ever forget that. So the how of God, ladies and gentlemen, God has his own how. I submit to you God has his own strategy. For carrying out any of his word. You will see God has told them. I've given you, uh, you know, all the promised land. Now Jericho, you want, to, uh, you want to get over Jericho. Do you know that the strategy for Jericho was different? Ladies, oh come on, am I talking to God's people? God told them, he said, go around Jericho eh, once every day for six days. And on the seventh day, you go around seven, seven times. Now Jericho is not, ladies and gentlemen, a house. It's not a compound. Please understand, a city. The Bible calls it the city of Jericho. To go around the city seven times. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, God has his own how. And God said, after you have, you have done that seven times, now blow the trumpet. 
He said, and let the people shout. <laughs> and the Bible says the Lord has gone off with a shout. God went up and when, and when he was coming, that he descended his weight on the wall. <laughs> the whole world was forced down for them. He hent, the wall entered the ground. He didn't tumble. He entered the ground. Because if he tumbles, he will form another wall. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking about? And he straight, the Bible says, went straight on a plain ground. I don't know who I'm prophesying over right now. By the power of the spirit of the living God, as you are advancing now, those things you thought were barriers your way, in the name of Jesus, you are going right now, not recognizing and not in any capacity acknowledging those barriers anymore. And you will get where those barriers are and you discover those barriers are dear no more. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. close your eyes, disdain their existence and keep moving by the power Oh, the Holy Ghost, you will locate a plain ground in front of you yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And straightway, you will march into the city of prosperity. Yeah. <laughs> Jericho, glory be to God in the highest. Is somebody catch you what God is talking about? So you will see, they were able to accomplish this. Why? The Holy Ghost. The devil is trying to steal somebody's property, steal somebody's possessions, steal somebody's uh, 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 thing, or steal somebody's um, affect your child. I'm, I'm breaking the power of that devil now in the name of Jesus. And Amen. nothing negative will happen to that which belongs to you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So, uh, are you catching what I'm talking about? Yes, so, the uh, God has his own strategy. And you know what? That was a strategy. When five kings came against the Gibeonites and they called for Joshua to help, the strategy was different. God said, go and lay ambush overnight and then catch descend on them, of, I mean, um, uh, uh, all of a sudden and all that. When they wanted to destroy Ahai, the strategy also was different. Am I right? Please understand, God has strategy for every step. Why do you just take your step with the general way? Not asking God how to approach the matter. Even if God tells you that your boss will buy you a car, there is a way to approach the matter. I'll allow the Holy Ghost to teach you. God may just tell you that, you know one thing, stay more in the office with your boss to do more work. Do you understand me? When the time, when the time comes for somebody to get a car, your boss will pass it across to you. There is a how. I, I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody here. There is a how to get somebody. When your boss, ladies and gentlemen, wants to you know, promote someone, there is a how. You just, the thing doesn't just, so uh, as Christians, when God has revealed anything to us, I, I'm talking to somebody here, there is always a key to open every door. And the key that opens door here may not be the one that opens door B. So always collect the strategies from God. Now look at it in Genesis, sorry, in Judges chapter 19 and chapter 20. Um, uh, uh, of course, we all know the story, how Benjamin, please, everybody study J Judges chapter 19 and chapter 20. How Benjamin, you know, uh, 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 did something offensive to history, slept with the, uh, the concubine of a particular uh, man. And of course, uh, the man called for and killed the concubine. And uh, I mean, the concubine died and the man called for the help of all Israel to fight the battle. All Israel gathered together against Benjamin. And they asked the Lord, who shall lead them? God said, Judah. And then, will you deliver Benjamin to their hands? God said, yes, I will deliver. And they went. And Benjamin defeated them. Ah. And then they, said, they wept before the Lord. And they, they, the second day, they gathered together again. And then they asked the Lord, will you deliver Benjamin? God said, yes. And they went and to strike Benjamin. And Benjamin came out against them and defeated them the second time. Ah. And the Bible said, they now wept and fasted the third time. And they asked God, should we go? God said, go. It's the same instruction God is giving. But you know one thing? They never paid attention to getting details from God in terms of strategy. This was the third time now they now strategize. Let's lay ambush. Let some people stay here beside Benjamin, beside their city. When we now, some people will now come on towards their gate. When Benjamin sees them, and Benjamin comes out, thinking that the way they have defeated them the past two days, they will defeat them again. He says, so the, man that, the people that come against them, they will now start running. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? And the men of Benjamin will now be pursuing them. He said, the moment they do that, he said, the people that lay ambush beside the walls of Benjamin, they will now come and enter into the Benjamin city. Remember how the men of Benjamin would have come out. He said, set the city, you know, on flames. And then, or whatever, and then, you know, now start attacking the Benjamin from behind. So, the moment they engage that strategy, the Bible made us to understand that when Benjamin, all the men of Benjamin came out against the people that were fleeing, the ones in the bush just came out. So Benjamin became sandwiched. The ones in the bush now face them from the back. The ones from the front running, they now turned and face them. So Benjamin was in the middle. They sandwiched Benjamin and had them as bugger. Yeah. If somebody catch what I'm talking about, they finished them completely. That was how they were able to win. Now, until they engaged strategy the third time, they kept losing. 
Ladies and gentlemen, all you need is wisdom. Today we'll pray for wisdom. All you need is to understand the strategy of God for the instruction God has given you. But God told me to be selling clothes. But you see, you just keep, you keep trying to sell and you are finding it difficult. Because no strategy is engaged. May the Lord grant you strategy today. And then you prevail by strategy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So even if God tells you he wants to do so, 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 so. You can as well wait and let God just minister to you on the how he wants to go about it. And what are you supposed to do? He will minister it to you. And then you will see everything just working out. Glory be to God in the highest. So, um, so that's just uh, that about uh, um, the legs of a vision. Now, uh, because of time, I just briefly want to talk on one or two cases uh, of men who don't pay attention to details. The dangers of not paying attention to details. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, it is dangerous not to pay attention to this because it can strike a man off the plans of God. The fact that you have the general instruction and you don't pay attention to it is, is better for you not to have the instruction than to have it and neglect the details. I repeat myself, it is better for a man not to have instructions from God, not to know what God is saying and then just live his life anyhow. It's better than for a man to know it and not pay attention to details. Ah! It can be very painful. You know one thing? It is only people that hurt you, that know you so well, that hurt you so deep. I don't know if you understand. Somebody who don't know you so well may not hurt you so deep. So when God has brought you into the confines of his general instruction, and you are not, ladies and gentlemen, a detailed person, ah, it can be dangerous. Look at it. Look at a man by the name Saul. There's something I wanted to see about this man by the name Saul. This man was a man that God was using. He was a man that... God, it was a man that, ladies and gentlemen, God called, God chose him. Saul did not choose God, God chose him. Now God now told Saul, when at his anointing, you know, in 4 Samuel chapter number 10, starting from verse 1. And Samuel took a vial of oil and anointed Saul. And then Samuel told Saul, he said, when you go, he said, this sign shall follow you. You will, be, you will get to the sepulchre of Rachel. You will see ten, three men passing. And you will do this. They will salute you. They will give you wine. They will give you bread. You will get to the garrison of the Philistines. Here you will see the heel of God. Here you will see the, 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 the company of prophets prophesying. The Spirit of God shall come upon you. You will prophesy with them. And then you will turn to another man. That's verse 6, verse 7. Say, do as occasion serve you, for God is with you. Verse 8. He said, and you will go before me to Gigal. And seven days will you wait. He said, and I will come and perform the sacrifice. Now, Samuel here was talking, operating from the word of wisdom. He was telling him things that will be. Now, the word of wisdom is one of the dominant gifts in the prophetic. You have the capacity to see the future. And here, Samuel was operating in it. And he told him, he said, verse 8, you will, he said, you will go before me to Gilgal, and you will wait seven days. He has told him what will be until I come, I Samuel come and perform the sacrifice for you. Now, and it came to pass as Samuel said, but I said, and everything Samuel said came to pass that day. So that is to say that that's verse 8. Saul should pay attention to it, that it will also come to pass. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. And then in 4 Samuel chapter 13, Saul found himself in Giga. And the Philistines came at Mishmak to fight against Saul and his men. Now, look at it, verse 11. The Bible says, and then before then, Saul just went. And perform the sacrifice before Samuel came. He waited for seven days, but he didn't wait seven full days. On the seventh day, Samuel now came. And Samuel came, and as Samuel was coming, that was when Saul had finished performing the sacrifice. And Samuel said, Ah, ah, oh God, verse 11, 1 Samuel 13, verse 11. Samuel said, Ah, ah, what has happened? Saul said, You know, uh, you know, the Philistines were gathered against me. He said they were at Mishmash, and I knew they would come against me at any time. And all the people had departed from me. They have fled. He said, and you delayed in coming. He said, therefore, I said the Philistines would come against me. He said, and I had not performed sacrifice to God. So I forced myself. See what the word he used. I forced myself to perform the sacrifice. Can you see? And Samuel said, you have done foolishly. Verse 13. He said, today your kingdom would have been established. It could have been he said, I could have been established forever. We could have been talking about the household of Saul today, not the household of David. He, said, he was not lying. He said, today, today your kingdom could have been established forever. He said, but because of this that you have done, he said, the kingdom is taken away from you and is given, taken, given to your neighbor. He said, a man after God's own heart, he will do all of God's will. He, 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 somebody can't I'm talking about. He said, it's given to a man after God's own heart. Now, because 
the man went to Giga, as the Lord said. The man waited seven days, as the Lord said, but did not wait seven full days. And then Samuel said, I'm the one to perform the sacrifice. And he forced himself to do it. He did not pay attention to duties. That was where, number one, he lost out on kingship forever. Number two, now, you know, 1 Samuel 15, God said, go and destroy the Hamlekites. Go to Saul to go and tell him. I mean, Samuel to go and tell Saul. Go and destroy the Hamlekites and ruin them utterly. Can you see it? Clear instruction. God had told Moses that he was, I mean, in the days of whatever, that he was going to destroy the Amalekites and delete their memory from the surface of the earth. God has already said it in Exodus. Now, please understand, this is now the instruction being passed across. You know, in, do you understand? To, 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 um, to Saul, to go and carry that instruction out. God has said it through Moses. You know, I think he's, he's, he's in Exodus, I think he's in um, Deuteronomy. Now, you know what? Saul in 1 Samuel 15 now went. To carry it out. Verse 8. The Bible says, And Saul spared Hagag, the king of the Hamlekites. And Saul was unwilling, you see, to, to destroy all the fat cows, uh, verse 9, all the fat, you know, uh, all the good-looking animals and all the good things of the Hamlekites. The Bible says, For it was not his will. Can you see? And Rashad says, He was not willing. How can God give instruction and you are not willing? And God said unto Samuel, verse 10, he said, he, said, he said, he repented me that I have anointed Saul as king. Verse 11. He said, for he has not carried out my, 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 my commandment. Therefore, I have rejected him also as king. Now, before, God rejected his posterity. Now, God is now rejecting his kingship. Do you understand? In 1 Samuel 13, God said, not, he said his kingdom will not be established forever. That he rejected his posterity in power. But in 1 Samuel 15, God is, verse 11, God is now rejecting his kingship. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So you will see that God, <coughs> because the man didn't pay attention to details, go and ruin them utterly. The man was lying. Is there is the people that uh, said we should spare this for sacrifice when Samuel confronted him? We sacrifice. Does God have interest in sacrifice? He said, for obedience is more than sacrifice, better than sacrifice. And to hearken is better than the fat of rams. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? That means he said for obedience is like disobedience is like the sin of witchcraft. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And rebellion. He said, he said, he said, stubbornness. He said it's like even idolatry. That is it is so terrible when somebody is stubborn. It's a terrible thing. Make sure that if you are stubborn not the sound of my voice, you walk on that nature. It's not a good thing. Your husband can't talk to you, you are very stubborn. Your wife can't advise you, you are very stubborn. It's not a good thing. It's a satanic nature. It's one of the principal signs of demonology. I'm telling you. Because when you see Satan in heaven, you know he was very stubborn eh? and very proud and wanted to exalt his throne above. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And since he came to the earth, he has been very stubborn in terms of wickedness. Please understand that if you see people that are occultic, what is the, what is the symbol for the occultic people? It's goat. Am I right? It's goat. What, what do you know about goat? Stubborn head. So if you are a stubborn person and you yourself, you know you are stubborn and you are not working on it, it's not a good thing. You will always miss out on details with God. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So you will see um, uh, someone here pain, saying that it was your stubbornness that led to this. You are very stubborn. God can't instruct you. You are highly uninstructable. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And when a man is not teachable, he's not reachable. That's the truth. So it is only those that God can teach that God can reach. So it is very important that we, 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 we are soften to pay attention to instructions of the Spirit. Oh, glory be to God in the highest. So, see, the, here was a man who lost out on Kishi. Though he knew God, but he lost it out completely. See another man by the name David. You know something that, that touched me? And this is a word for somebody here. The fact that you have money and you have capacity doesn't say you should go and start a project. The fact that the land is there doesn't say you should go and start building. The, land that, the fact that the money is in your account does not say you should go and start. Please hear from God. The fact that you have the plane ticket or they have the money to buy the ticket doesn't say you should, you should jack out from Nigeria and there is visa. Doesn't say you should jack out. You can jack out and jack out. <laughs> May you not jack out after, after you jack out. Please make sure capacity is no indication of divine leading. Make sure you still hear from God. Most times we interpret God's leading by saying, wow, God has provided the capacity. Am I right? That means we should move. No. In First Chronicles chapter 28, David was talking. Look at it. First Chronicles 28 verse 11. The Bible says, And David gave to Solomon all the plans of the house of the Lord which he received by the Spirit. First Chronicles 28 from verse 11 to verse 14. 
And David gave unto Solomon all the plans of the temple which he received by the Spirit. So it was David that received the plans, the design, and all that. And then chapter 29, verse 2. David said, I have prepared for the house of the Lord with all my might. He gave, he gave gold. When I converted the talents of gold he gave, it was in the billions of dollars. Silver, like that, like that. He gave in billions of dollars. Eh? And he, he encouraged people, all the people also gave. Now, and they gave it to Solomon to build the temple. Now, David had the capacity. He had the design. But you know one thing? Capacity is no indication that you should go ahead. God said it is Solomon that will build, not you. So, ladies and gentlemen, the fact that God has given you everything, please pay attention to details and hear from God. Hear from God. The fact that you have a car doesn't say you should make that journey. Hear from God. It doesn't even say you should travel with your car. Hear from God. Oh, come on. Am I talking to God's people here? Make sure you hear from God and know the details. God bless you. Now, I, I will share something to us about Moses here. And then, um, uh, maybe I should share about the Lord Jesus Christ and Moses. And then we're going to start praying. Look at Jesus. He paid attention to the, the details. In John chapter number 2, uh, there was a marriage in Calan of Galilee. And his mother came to him. Yeah, the wine is finished. Uh, do something. Verse 4, John chapter 2, verse 4. Jesus said, Mama, leave me alone. For my time has not yet what? Come. But thank God that his time came during the ceremony. Do you understand? That means Jesus was sensitive to details. He knew about timing. He was sensitive, ladies and gentlemen, to who? He won't go to, the, to people outside the lost people of Israel. He was sensitive to where? He stayed within Israel. He was sensitive, ladies and gentlemen, to when he understood timing. My time has not yet come. He was sensitive to how he understood God's strategy for different miracles. He wanted to heal three different blind men. He used three different strategies. He wanted to heal blind Bartholomew. Mark chapter number 10 from verse 46, verse 50. What do you want me to do that I may see? He said, see. He wanted to heal a man that Jesus took him out of the city. He's part on the floor. I think that should be, is it Mark 8 or so? He's part on the floor. And then he anointed his eyes with clay. Can you see it? That is a case of clay. And the man saw. The other says, what do you see? He said, he saw, he saw men as tree. And he did, he repeated the process again. That is clay. Then the third time, he wanted to heal another kind of case of blindness. In John chapter 9, Jesus told the man, go to the pool of Siloam and take your bath. That's one of the most deadly instructions you can give to a blind man. How will he find his way to the pool? And number two, a pool. Do you understand? But God has his strategies. So this is same case, blindness. Three different strategies. So Jesus was operating divine strategy over different things. Just as Joshua was operating different strategies over different cities to conquer them. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So it's important to know the strategy for that project that God has given you. You must know. Don't just be approaching it generally. Come on, pay attention to details. Let God tell you how he wants to get it done. Oh, go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So there's always a how in the heart of God. Let God tell you, and then you will see yourself getting the victory. So Jesus paid attention to, to, to timing. He said, my time has not yet come. John 2, 4. In John chapter 4, in John chapter 7, you know, the Bible said Jesus was at his hometown. And his brother said, go and show yourself to the, to the whatever now. For, uh, go and show yourself at the Feast of the Tabernacles from verse 2. They said, for no man who wants to be known. You know, hides in obscurity. He said, go and show yourself so that the world may see you. And so that your disciples may see the kind of miracles that you are doing. And verse 7, John, and verse 6, John chapter 7, verse 6, Jesus said, He said, don't worry. My own time has not yet come. For you, your time is always now. That is to say, for general people, any time is any day. Any time is any time for them. But for a sensitive person, you wait for your time. You wait to hear from God, when is my time? Is this my time? Is this the time for this miracle in my life? You just don't because even of any impromptu irritability, you know, or, or stimuli, take a step, or, act, or whatever, or hunger, or, or inducement, or this or that, just take a step, or capacity, existence, just take a step. You wait for timing. Jesus said, my time has not yet come. When the Bible says in Luke chapter 9, verse 51, I love the scripture. When the time came for him, even to be crucified, the Bible says he fixed his gaze constantly towards Jerusalem. Luke chapter 9, verse 51. His gaze or his eyes were constantly fixed on Jerusalem. That is to say, he understood timing and he knew what history ought to do. Remember in that, that scripture in 1st Chronicles, is it 1st Chronicles now? 
chapter 12, right? I think verse 32. The Bible says, And the sons of Isaac had understanding of time. Therefore they knew what Israel ought to do. So Jesus had understanding of time. He knew the time for this thing has come. Therefore, his gaze was always fixed towards it. His mind was there. And then he saw his steps taking him there. His legs were taking him. Because that is where his eyes were. <laughs> is somebody catch what I'm talking about? That's how his eyes were. So his legs took him there. <laughs> Glory be to God in the highest. So, you see, this is a strong word for us. We need to understand timing and what to do. When they came to arrest Jesus, Jesus said, uh, he said, don't worry, Peter, don't strike anybody. He said, for this is, this is their time. This is their hour and the power of darkness. He said, daily I was in the temple with you. Could you lay hands on me? But this is your hour and the power of darkness. So Jesus had understanding of timing. He knew it could, it's not time to call angels to go into fight. He, knew, he, had, he had understanding of different segments of time in his life and what should be done. When he should go to Jerusalem, he knew. When he should die. When, do you understand what I'm talking about? So he, he, he knew that this is the time for darkness. He knew what he should not do. He knew he should not call for reinforcement of angels. He knew he should surrender. He knew, if somebody catch what I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, may you understand the segments of timing in your life. You will never miss out on divine timing in your life. You will always understand what God's timing is saying per time. Paying attention to details. Lastly, I give you the scripture. Exodus chapter 40. Uh, that is Moses. Remember, in Exodus chapter 25, God told Moses, He said, make sure you build according to the pattern which I show you on the mountain. In Hebrews chapter number 8 and verse number 5, the Almighty God said unto Moses, He said, make sure you build according to the pattern which was shown you on the mountain. Make sure you build according to the pattern which was shown you on the mountain. Now, God showed Moses the pattern. And Moses built the tabernacle. Now, see what the Bible said. Please, I need a reader. I need a reader. I need a reader. I want us to read from verse 19. You will begin to see the things Moses... Everybody, please, if you have a Bible there, turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 40 from verse 19. Everybody, this is where we are ending today's... Uh, uh, transmission exodus chapter number 40 and from verse number 19 are we all there yes. i want us to see uh, please a reader read for me verse 19 and he spread the tent over the tabernacle. now this is where moses was setting up the tabernacle and he spread about the tent over the tabernacle i put the coverings of the tent above upon it, the coverings of the tent above upon it. as the lord commanded moses i want you to pay attention to that word as the lord commanded Moses, verse 21. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle. Set up the veil of the covering. Set up the veil of the covering. And covered the ark of the testimony. And covered the ark of the testimony. As the Lord had commanded Moses. Can you see a man doing everything as God commanded him? Paying attention to details. He will cover it with clothes. He will move it this way. He will do it that way. As the Lord commanded now, verse number 23. And he set bread in order upon it before the Lord. And he set bread in order upon it before the Lord. The Lord has Moses. As the Lord has commanded Moses. Verse 25. And he lighted the lamps before the Lord. As the Lord commanded Moses. Paying attention to details. And verse number 27. And he burnt sweet incense thereon. As the Lord commanded Moses. As the Lord commanded Moses. Verse 29. And he put the altar of burnt offering by the door of the tabernacle. And he put the altar of burnt offering by the door of the tabernacle. Of the tent of the congregation. Of the tent of the congregation. And offered upon it the burnt offering and the meat offering. And offered upon it the burnt offering and the meat offering. As the Lord commanded Moses. Now let's just read from verse 31 to verse 34. Now we're actually going to verse 33 and 34 now. But let's read from verse 31 to 34. Yes. And Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet thereon. And Moses and Aaron washed their hands and their feet thereon. And when they went into the tent of the congregation. And when they came near the altar. They washed. As the Lord commanded Moses. Now verse 33. And he reared up the court around the tabernacle. And he reared up the court around the tabernacle. And set up the hanging of the court gates. And, and set up the hanging of the court, yes. So Moses finished the work. 
So Moses what? Finish the work. Now see what happens when a man pays attention to details. See what happens when a man pays attention to details. Now please, verse 34. Then the cloud, the cloud covered the tent of the congregation. Then the cloud covered the tent. He did not pray. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Did Moses pray? No. no. He didn't pray. Just pay attention to details. If glory will fill your life. If you pay attention to this, two things will happen. Two things. Number one is this. You will be able to finish your race. You know, Jesus said, I have finished the work which thou hast given unto me. John chapter number 17 verse 5. He said, now glorify me with the same glory that I had with you before the world began. Those who finish, they always have glorification. See, and Moses, because he paid attention to details, the Bible says he finished the work. The glorification not come as well. They understand, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. That is exactly what God is saying about our lives. Every believer, pay attention to details. You will see the glory of God filling your life. Your job will be filled with glory. Your home will be filled with glory. Don't just be somebody who is just hasty to marry. Pay attention. Let God lead you to the person. Be clear on divine instruction. Pay attention. Just don't get any job and just start any profession. And he just, 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 just let me just do anything. Whatever your hand find it to do. Ah, no, let it be that whatever he tells you to do, that is what you do. Whatever he tells you, now that you know God and the Holy Ghost is in you, let it be that your in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, right? It says, whatever your hand find it to do, do. But here, God is saying, John chapter number 2, verse 3, he said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Let it be whatever he tells you, specific instruction. And pay attention to details. Your life will not be like the life of Saul. Your life will be the type that will finish even that which God has called you to do. And glory will follow your life. Every phase of your life where you finish beautifully by paying attention to details, glory always accompanies that phase. The beauty of God can follow even your ministry. The beauty of God can follow, ladies and gentlemen, your marriage. The beauty of God can follow, ladies and gentlemen, everything about your life. If only you allow him. To give you instructions. The Lord bless and keep you wherever you are today. I just want your hands lifted right now. As you begin to pray. Ladies and gentlemen. This is. Ladies and gentlemen. And how that is filled with the power of God. All has been said. Ladies and gentlemen. And this is the end of the matter. You begin to pray and begin to talk to God. Father. I want the heart that pays attention to details. I want to pay attention to details. I don't want to lose. I don't want to miss out on you. I don't want to miss out on you. I don't want to be plugged out of your plans. Lord, I want to know what you are saying per time in my life. I want to design what you are saying. Paying attention to details. Not just taking the law into my hands. Oh, because I have money. I just start building. I just start doing this. I just start doing that. Or because I'm of a mature age. I just start going to marry a wife. No, Lord. I want you to direct me. I want to know what you are saying. Lord, I want to pay attention to details. I want to hear from you. Somebody begin to talk to God. Yes. This is what makes the glory of God to fuse up everywhere. When you pay attention to details, Jesus paid attention. He finished the work the Father has given unto him. Ladies and gentlemen, he paid attention to his timing. He knew when to go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He knew when this. He knew when that. He knew when the power of darkness has their timing. He knew everything. Ladies and gentlemen, he paid attention to details. Somebody pray, Father, give me a heart to pay attention. Somebody pray, Father, I don't want to miss out on details. I am tired of just doing, my God, a regular thing. I must know when God is moving and when I should move. I must know when God is taking a step and when I should take a step. Somebody begin to pray today, Lord, I keep up with divine timing. In Galabaya, pray, 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 pray. Lord, I keep up with divine timing. I receive grace to keep up with divine timing. That every point in time, Lord, my God, the time and hour will not be taken away from me. My God, the time and hour, Lord, will not be taken away from me. Lord, I have revelations of His timing. I have revelations of divine timing. I have dealings on divine timing. Lord, the Bible says the turtle knows his time. Ayakata Yagaba. He said the turtle knows his time. But in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, even verse 12. 
12, the Bible says, but, verses 12 and 13, the Bible says, but man does not know his time. Lord, I pray today I know my time. I have details. I have understanding, oh God, of the details of the intricate dealings of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name have we prayed. Amen. The greatest breakthrough of my life started from it started from year two, but on a larger note of serious breakthrough, it started from year three. When we got into that room, Pastor Ike just took Psalm 103. Psalm 102, verse 13, and he read it. He said, For the time to favor Zion, yet the said time has come. From that time, great favor came on my life. That was when people started giving me things so terrifically. Year one, year two, I really did not ask, uh, receive anything. Do you understand what I'm talking about? For year three, people were struggling to bless me. To date, that grace has not lifted. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Pastor Ike read that. He said, this is the scripture coming to him. And I knew my time has come for favor. I don't know what I'm talking to here. The Lord is telling me that that same scripture applies to somebody on all fronts here. You are going to begin to pray. Father, I know my time has come for favor. From today, I come under that grace. Somebody begin to pray. Langabarado zebra digarushta. Lord, I know my time has come for unusual favor. By the power of the Spirit of God. Lord, I know my time has come for unusual favor. Mabra legedoxta. Geboraga. Bambra negedoxta. Bebro digedoxta. Leanda lagazo. Nemandradiego zebra ligedoxta. Xenementa. Menga bargadoxa. Labro egidigza. Ladande legedoxa. Nemandaraya. Lord, I know my time has come for unusual favor. I know my time has come for you your favor father today in the name of jesus the grace for favor rest on my life on a higher note my god i receive higher favor favor to receive jets favor to receive higher gift favor to receive higher gift father lord jesus father place the favor for higher gift on me favor for higher dimensions of favor i said grace for higher dimensions of favor grace for higher dimensions oh god father i know my time has come for higher favor lord i know my time has come for higher favor lord i know my my time has come for higher favor. Lord, I know my time has come for higher favor. Father, from tonight, in the name of Jesus, establishment and settlement is my time. Somebody begin to pray. That is what we are fasting on from next week. Establishment and settlement is my time. Somebody begin to pray. Lord, it is time for me to be established. What business do you want to be established? Settlement, Lord, settle me with all the intricate factors. Settle me, oh God, lead me clear. Let me know. Father, today, settle me. That is settle me. Father, settle me in your specific will. Everybody begin to pray. Lord, establish me in your will. Lord, settle me in your will. Somebody pray, 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 pray. Father, establish me in your will. Serve me in your will. Ma bralido hexe elahan de le haya kurbo sitali ale aika barkati zalia dia reninande eke barado zila bla haigara. Lord establish me your will. Serve me your will. Lord establish me your will. Serve me your will. Lord establish me your will. Serve me your will. Mangre digobo zataya, mangre digobo zalato, rigabo zalaba, membra ligarokta, gizane manande, eboraga, egrogo, riguriga, ebozate, yelagadoza, libra ligado. Lord, I refuse to be destitute of your directions. In the mighty name of Jesus, my Father, my God, I refuse to be destitute of your directions. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 5, the Bible says, A wise man's art designed time and judgment. Judgment there means decision. It designs time and it knows what decision to make. They say this is the judgment of court, it means this is the decision of court. It is a, a wise man's heart designs time and then he knows the decision to make. That's why he said in that first Chronicles chapter 2, verse 12, that the sons of I mean chapter 12, verse uh, 32, that the sons of Isaac are at understanding of time. Am I right? Therefore, they knew what Israel ought to do. So please understand, you are going to pray today, Father, for wisdom. Wisdom to design time. Wisdom to design time. Wisdom to design time. I designed time, you know, some days ago. And it led seriously to my profiting on something that I made a move on. You are going to pray, Father, I need wisdom to design time. To know when to take the step. Father, part time, oh God, I need unusual wisdom. 
I need crazy, I mean, I mean depth of wisdom, unfathomable wisdom, depth of understanding to design time and to know what to do. Somebody begin to pray. Leobra Ligarukta Zilamante. Lord, Yadra, Egebazi, Legeboza, Brali Dagiza. Lord, I need wide wisdom, wide wisdom, wide wisdom, wide wisdom to design time, to design time, to design time, to design time, to design time. Lord, I need wide wisdom. Mapro Bagaboza, Mengabaragi, Balabodiza. Brali Bodiza, Raga Brali Bodanga, Ragadoza, Brani Madizo, Zandreboza, Brali Gadosta. Lord, I need wide wisdom. 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 Lord, I need wide wisdom. My Father, my God, I need depth of wisdom. My God, Lord Jesus, wideness of wisdom. The Bible says in First Chronicles chapter number four and verse twenty-nine. Everybody, turn your Bibles to First Chronicles chapter four, verse twenty-nine. Everybody. Turn your Bibles to First Chronicles chapter four, verse twenty-nine. We are going to pray after that order of wisdom. First Chronicles chapter four, verse twenty-nine. Are we all there? First Chronicles chapter four and verse number twenty-nine. Yes, please read out. Yambro legerosta. Read out. Yekerodosta. First Chronicles chapter four, Kings rather. First Kings. Sorry, it is First Kings chapter four, verse twenty-nine. First Kings chapter four, verse twenty-nine. First Kings chapter four, verse twenty-nine. Yes. And God gave Solomon wisdom. And understanding exceeding much. And understanding exceeding most. And largeness of heart. And largeness of heart. Even as the sand that is on the seashore. Even as the sand that is on the seashore. Can you see God gave him wisdom? I don't want narrow wisdom anymore. Lord, I don't want average wisdom anymore. Lord, I want wisdom in surplusity. I want my God more than sufficient wisdom. And God gave wisdom. Even and God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much. The Bible says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. To do exceeding, Father, give me exceeding abundantly. Give me exceeding. He's a God of exceeding abundantly. Somebody pray. And God gave wisdom. In Lebro, the God gave the Solomon his wisdom exceeding much. He gave him understanding exceeding much, like the sand of the seashore, a largeness of heart, like the sand of the seashore. Lord, my God, give me exceeding much. Lord, let my weak level be explosive. In the name of Jesus, let my bandwidth of operation and wisdom, my God, be unfathomable. In the name of Jesus, give me, my God, wisdom that beats all the schemes of the enemy. Give me wisdom to cancel, to cancel all your people, oh God. That the counsel I give to them, my God, Lord Jesus, is like a man hearing from the mouth of God himself. My God, make me the direct oracle of the Almighty. In wisdom, in counsel, by the power of God and that Daniel, my God, answered Ariok in wisdom and counsel. Lord, let all my answers be in wisdom and counsel. All the days of my life. 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 Ranina, Eliate, Yila, Riley, Kadosa, Prani, Gataya, Gurmo, Sataya, Gurmo, Di, Sataya. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, have we prayed. Now in Judges chapter number 19, the Lord said that somebody here, the burden of sin have lifted off you. He said, I've forgiven your sins. Stop condemning yourself and stop judging under that sin. Stop judging yourself. He said, I've forgiven. I've lifted it off. Okay, he said, okay. He said, flow in the power of the Spirit for more that I'm bringing on your life. See the Spirit of the living God. Now in Judges chapter 19 that we, that we studied, chapter 19, Judges chapter 19 and chapter 20, where Israel went to fight benjamin and they were losing they lost the first time god said they should go they lost god said they should go the second time they lost and the third time now they now got a strategy and then they used the strategy and they won now you know one thing that chapter 19 that started that story said in those days he said he said he said when israel had no king everybody did what seems good in their eyes that means they were engaging their own strategies do you understand what i'm talking about that's the beginning so that means i'm starting this chapter out, just have this at the back of your mind, though, that they did it according to their own ways. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. That was the reason why they lost. And somebody will say, but how will God tell them that he, give, he has handed over the Benjamin to them and they lost? No, they were doing it their own way. They were taking God's word and implementing it with their own strategy or with their own way. In those days, when Israel had no king, all did, all everybody did what seems good in their eyes. So chapter 19, they lost. Chapter 20, they lost until they fasted and asked God for strategy. And they now went with strategy. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So what seems good in your eyes may not always take you there. Now there is a king in your heart called the Holy Ghost. Let the king rule. 
Let him rule. Let him rule. He is the king in your heart. Let him rule. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. He indwells you. Let him rule. Lift up your hands and say, Holy Spirit, please rule. Please rule. Direct my life. Please rule. Please rule right now. I don't want to go with my strategies anymore. Please rule. I'm tired of losing battles. Please rule. Rule in my life. Rule in all affairs of my life. Rule in all that I do. Sweet Holy Ghost, please rule. And my life will never remain the same again. Thank you, Jesus. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name have we prayed. Amen. 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 The Lord said there's somebody here, that yoke of bondage, that bondage of oppression, that bondage of sin, that bondage of the devil, God said is broken in your life. Amen. That bondage of sin is broken in your life. Amen. He said you are free. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. You know, it's a mother of breakthrough. Idemija. Money de mi jao, hallelujah. Emi de ni ayo, ide mi ja, hallelujah, mo de. Now hear this, ide mi ja, pow. Money de mi jao, hallelujah. Emi de ni ayo, ide mi ja, hallelujah, mo de ni. You are released. Amen. Go flying on the wings of his leading. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, at this particular time, this is very awesome. The anointing is so strong. I would like all of us to give unto the Lord at this time before we ask questions. Wherever you are, whatever you want to give, package it beautifully for Jesus. Under this same function, I want to bless our seed. That's why we are giving now. Uh, just package it beautifully for Jesus. The account of the ministry is being projected. That is uh, um, spirit, uh, life giving spirit. Life giving spirit ministries international. Life giving spirit ministries international. You will see it projected on the Zoom page. It's projected right now. It's on our YouTube page. At the same time, ladies and gentlemen, it is on our all channels. It's on all channels right now. It's on Facebook. It's on Mixer Last channel. At the same time, it's on our Instagram channel. Uh, please, it's on all channels. Please check it. It's on all channels. Live Giving Spirit Ministries International. Uh, it, okay, it is being transmitted even right now. Please let everybody make sure you participate. The unction of the Spirit is so, is so strong on this meeting. As you give, the Lord bless you. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 6, Let him that is taught communicate with him that teacheth in all good things. After you have been taught the deep things of God, ladies and gentlemen, it is good to communicate. Romans chapter 15, verse 27 and 28, Brother Paul the Apostle said, If I minister unto you spirituals, it is not wrong to reap your canna. So ladies and gentlemen, let's give bountifully unto the Lord so that God can bless us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So as you are making those transfers, I want to bless you right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I release the blessing over everyone that is giving in the name of Jesus. That in Jesus, name, the blessing of this message go with you forever. The blessing of this hour stick with you forever. It sticks to you and to your children. It sticks to you and to your businesses. It sticks to you and to your career, to your profession, and to all that you lay your hands upon, your endeavors. I see somebody, you are believing God for a payment. New Ruko Jesu, you will not be disgraced. I say right now, shame will not come to you. The Bible says, he that believes shall not see shame. God knows your ultimatum and God surprises you with a supply. I say God surprises you with a supply. God surprises you with his surprise. I say with his supplies. I say with his supplies. And I say with his supplies. Thank you for blessing all the offerings. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, this is the time to make comments. You can't say that all that God has said today, you don't have anything to say about it. Please say something about it. Your experience can bless us. Your additions can bless us. I have ministered to you extempore. It is when you also talk that I remember those things I said, and it blesses me as well. You understand? As I'm teaching, I teach as the Spirit directs me. You understand what I'm saying? So please, let's talk, and then, you know, by our mutual faith, we will all be comforted in Jesus' name. And if you have questions, please ask questions. If there be any area that bless you, please talk about it. God bless you. Mr. Og Mr. Elijah, I want to hear your comment. Yes, 
<laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon. <laughs> okay. I, uh, my name is Elijah from um, London. I'm currently in London. Uh, it was four days ago here this morning. I, I was um, there was something that uh, Pastor Fermi you said. Um, I think two years ago, concerning the program that I was supposed to be at on, and um, it came recently again. And I was just like, okay, I need a word. I need a word from God to confirm. Actually, I need two words from God to confirm um, what, what was coming to me. And um, what first came to me was the word that you, you said. The day you said what you said, the scripture you said actually came to my mind. And I'm like, but this is what Pastor Femi said. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I need something else. But it kept coming. And I went to my WhatsApp message and... There was this um, broadcast from you um, saying to join this program. And I joined in and I was like, oh, wow, okay, this is a leading of the, the spirit. Then again, um, during the your ministration, you talked about um, the place of backing it up with the word of God. And that was, that was really, uh, uh, it was really, it was something for me. Then apart from that instruction also that you have to pay attention to getting how to do it it's not just about um god has spoken about it but you need to still get instructions if not <laughs> you you surround your benjamin and <laughs> you are not uh, you're just fighting and losing fighting and losing until you get instruction on how to do it and that um that really blessed me and that is something to take away from me thank you very much sir god bless you, god bless you. hallelujah Okay, yeah. please, can we have further contributions? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, thank you so much for um, the ministration today. Um, the leading of the Spirit is very, very um, vital for us in our Christian journey. But I feel that there are some times where you feel led by God, but as you go on that journey where you feel led by God, you actually thought something was good and then suddenly you hit a point where you discover that it is not good what do you do in that situation do you was it actually god that led or you thought it was god that led sometimes it's confusing so i want to know how do you ensure that you have clarity so that we don't miss it praise That's the lord my question. praise the lord you had a very important question that uh, you asked. The Lord bless you. You remember during the teaching I said there is the element of mystery in the leadings of God. There are times when you just feel you are there. And then you get there and you discover that you are not there there. It may be because of timing. It may be probably the timing of what you want to do. Do you understand? God may announce something to you and then you feel, oh, I'm there. This is it. And then when you get there, you discover that probably things are still going wrong about that leading. And then you are wondering why. Maybe your timing. Maybe God will have you still wait. The fact that God announces it to you doesn't say the right time for that thing has come. And if you miss out on timing, it will be as though that leading is completely wrong in the first place. That's one. Number two is this. You know, there is an element of mystery in working with God. Look at how Samuel got to the house of Jesus and he says, surely. <laughs> that word struck me. 1 Samuel 16 verse 6. He says, surely the Lord's anointed if you see before me. That's the call concerning Eliab. And the Lord said, no, this is not the one. So at times when you get there and you think, oh, let's use relationship for instance. You think, oh, this is the person. All signs are showing. And that's when God says, oh, but I thought God, I have I've come here. This is the person I thought. And then God takes it to the next person. And then to the next person. Most believers at times, we don't, you see, this is a mystery about God. Again, went through it. Every believer will go through it. This is a prophet that he has got direct. Can you imagine him going through? And he had to go through all the cities. See Paul going through all the cities one by one. Eh? To Phrygia, to this... You know, to move from one city to the other, no be joke. Oh. They were not riding cars. Oh. They're trekking. Oh. It's like saying he moved from Lagos to Abeokuta. And from Abeokuta to Jebode. 
I'm from Ejebu Ode, he went to Ejebu Igbo. I'm from Ejebu Igbo, he went to Ibadan. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And uh, when they get there, that they will discover that the Holy Ghost is saying no. But I thought that God is directing us to that place. But I thought that, but I thought that, but I thought that it is only when they get there that they had no peace. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? And what do you do when you begin to experience such? Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, the only encouragement is that continue. Do you know one thing? Samuel continued. After he was disappointed with the first, the second he continued, the third he continued, the fourth he continued, the fifth, insofar as your heart is straight with God, God will always take you to your David. That's the truth. Look at it, Paul continued, he kept moving, he kept moving. Don't think they probably didn't have any notion to go to any, any of those cities. They probably would. The Bible said they sailed, they paid their fare to go there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Nobody will fly from here to Abuja without having a purpose at the back of your mind. And then, <laughs> they paid their fare, they paid the ticket, and they went. But they kept moving until they got to Tras. And then the word of the Lord came. It's a man of Macedonia saying, come to Macedonia and help us. So the key word is keep moving. Just keep moving. Do you understand? Whether it is because of timing you missed it, whether it's because maybe even the person is not the right person, or whether probably, I mean, only God knows. Just keep walking with the Holy Ghost. That is the key thing about the journey of I mean, the journey of walking with the Spirit. That's one of the things I've discovered in my humble life. Just keep walking with the Spirit. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. He knows where He's taking you to. You know, Arubo journey. Do you understand? A lot of times when He's leading us, we complain. A man of God said something to me, which I can share on this platform. He said he saw an angel leading me. The angel was going in front, and I was going after the angel, and I was complaining. He said, he said I was complaining. I was just like, I hope to sue me. You know, and then you know one day, and I had a dream <laughs> later, and I saw me in the wilderness, and I didn't know the way, and I saw some shepherd, and one of them now took the shepherd staff and was walking in front of me, and took me out into a very glorious place. In fact, that journey in that wilderness was so long, we were just going, moving this one down, and I saw some people and all that. And you know one thing, my journey went in line exactly like that. I met those people physically from that after that dream do you understand what i'm talking about and at the end of the day he brought me to the glorious place he was taking me to now and i woke up i said ah, but this is a shepherd i saw their animals so the man left his animal started and then the lord interpreting it for me just told me he said the lord is my shepherd i shall know he says he said and he reminded me of the vision of that prophet <laughs> i said ah so all what i've been going through the zigzag operations ah, i said god I say it's you. Now, what is the zigzag operation I'm talking about? I talk in terms of the pains I've gone through. I talk in terms of my whole life. You know, moving from, you know, one pain to the other. I wish God can just take away the pains and just take me to where he was taking me to. But along the way, I saw that God finally took me there. You know, about two years ago, three years ago, the Almighty God showed up and took me to that glorious house that they were leading me to. And um, since that time, I thank God, it's been a blessing in that glorious house. You know, God had, you know, it's like when God just takes you to a place where He keeps blessing you. And that's how it has been. So, ladies and gentlemen, at times, you might have tried this, might have tried this business, as I've tried so many investments. You've tried this, you tried that, you are moving zigzag. But you know what? He's taking you somewhere. Now, at the end of the day, when you get there, you will know you are there. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Here is a brother saying one of the ways God leads is that he sends a signal. Like something coming on the radio, radio waves. He resonates with his spirit and he knows. And then, you know, he picks the leading. That's a good thing, Brother Michael. God bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, please, can we also ask for that question? Sister Buki, I want to hear your contribution. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you speak up a little um, bit? I will say on... Okay. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Um, I want to go in... In Boda... I want to go in Boda Elijah's route. And that's the... Um, you know, sometimes life is a mystery. 
I'm trying to unravel it, you know, but the best best is just to keep working with God. Something that I've actually learned in the journey of destiny is that sometimes you can't understand things. And I've heard Pastor Nathaniel Bassi said that if you do not understand, if you think you've prayed, you can't understand, ask God for mercy. If you feel that, you know, you understand, ask God for mercy. If everything looks as if you do not know the route to which you're going, still ask God for mercy and be, and be consistent. So what I've learned is consistency, consistency in service, consistency in all ways, because in it, it is still God leading. You can't understand, but it's still God leading. You know, the ways of God are not our ways. And for every step and for every phase, it takes us through life. He, he knows what he's doing. And the reason why he's taking us through those parts, is because he's the potter in the first place, he's our creator. You know, he's just like a potter and a clay. You can't tell a potter to bend you this route or bend you that route. Because at the time he was forming and creating you, you are not in the know. He's the one that is the almighty. So when he's molding you, when he's building you, when he's creating you, he understand. Because for him, there is a master plan and you are at peace in that master plan. So he, he, he works on you and when it's taking you through, it is when he's eventually done with you and he has taken you to where he wants it to be that you can then add everything together and it will start adding meaning. It will start making meaning or to it will it will be that you have the real picture. But while you are still in it, you know, you go through the pain, you know, and the likes, you know, sometimes, you know, there's confusion, you know, why? Because you're asking God, what would you have me do? You know, you're working on that route, but then God is still with you. Is the one that is with you because what baffled me more was the case of job and the case of zechariah in the book of luke one and job you know he was saying this is a man uh, you know a perfect man who ensured evil who does this and that but still they still went through their own path but at the end of the day it was still god with them walking through them so in life there is also the what i've learned today is that you know in as much as there's a timing and there's also the strategy the how. So, I, and I know that, you know, we, what I've learned here, I would go and sit down with the word and learn and I keep, keep on asking God, God, what is the strategy? What strategy would you want me to take this time? Even in this season, even me knowing his purpose, but the question is, how do I go about it? What's the strategy for this season? So that would be it for me. Thank you, sir. Okay, Sister Buki, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Um, may I say this, Sister Buki, God bless. Reduce that volume completely. Uh, may I say this? Hallelujah. 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 Okay, may I say this, that um, Sister Buki, God bless you for this very wonderful and wondrous contribution. Um, uh, you know, at times, I just want to chip this in. You made mention of some things about Job and Zechariah, the father of uh, John the Baptist. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1, verse 6, the man was holy and was blameless, walking in all the ordinances of God, yet he had no child. There are times when you are doing all what you should do scripturally, and then you don't have results to show. I went through that time in my life. I prayed and prayed, and one thing I used to say then is that it's only that I served a God that could not deliver, but I will still continue to serve him. And then I remember one day I was saying it in my house, and tears filled my eyes, hot tears, and were, were coming down from my eyes. And I was saying it, and I was crying. I was like, Lord, I serve you. I was praying nine hours a day. Which other thing? I said, this other, oh, I looked at my siblings. My father had 72 siblings, uh, 72 children. I said, nobody prays like this. Nobody serves you. I'm probably like the most spiritual of all my siblings. And then I was the only one stagnant. Every other person was moving forward. So I cried. I cried. It was as though, and then you know what? It was just going year after year. Year after year. Year after year. You can imagine that. And you are praying. And it's like, God, where is your face? But when that time came, when the fullness of time came, the power of God visited me in the course of the night, showed me a revelation of me coming out of the wilderness. 
I crossed a bridge even into a nation abroad and he showed me said this is the time and then ladies and gentlemen miracles just started happening from there advancement started and this was after six years I mean six years advancement just started ladies and gentlemen and I just kept moving now you see I thank God today oh, if I look at the number of vehicles that have gone through my hand, I can count close to 70. So there is no classmate of mine, maybe in my original set in secondary school, that I know that is anywhere today that I can say that where they have me to, I cannot stand. Do you understand what I'm saying? God covered the gap for me. Ladies and gentlemen, there are times when there are some years where it seems they are, they are, they are wasted years. There are no wasted years for a man who continues with God. You see, the key word is in continuity, which the book he talked about. In John chapter 8, I think verse 31 and 32, Jesus said, If you continue in my words, then I hear my disciples. Continuity is the key word to press through with the things of God. Don't give up. Continue. Quitters never win. And winners are no quitters. That's the truth. In... Acts chapter 1 verse 14, the Bible says, and they continued in prayers, in supplications, in fasting, and there the Holy Ghost came upon them. They continued. The key word is continuity. In Acts chapter number 6, the apostle said verse 4, he says, separate, get here among yourselves seven men that can attend to this business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayers and the ministry of the word. Continuity is the key word. So if you continue, ladies and gentlemen, you will always praise him. You know that Samuel continued. He didn't get disappointed in God that God, with all my prophetic accuracy, I've tried Eliab. Maybe it's a business. Eliab may be a business for someone, and the business failed. You know what? Samuel didn't sit down there. He went to Abinadab, the second person. He examined again. Maybe it took him three years to do that thing again, and he failed again. He went to the next one. He went to the, if you continue, you will eventually press through. To the right answer. There was a well, uh, uh, um, an oil well they were digging in Texas, sponsored by a finance institution. So the man dug and they dig the seismic text, and the seismic text showed that there was oil there. And they kept digging and they dug thousands of feet into the ground and they were not finding oil. So the, you know, the estimations, the calculations that okay, maybe by the time you dig 10,000 feet, you will find. Now they have even gone double, they, maybe 20, and they were not finding. So this finance institution wanted to withdraw that they were not, you know, and you know, it cost like hundreds of millions of dollars to dig these things. So they wanted to withdraw, but the man went to encourage them again, said, this is what it is, said, this thing is here. Just give me some more chance. Just give me some more assistance. He said, I will get through. And they, they decided to give him again. And he went down. Ladies and gentlemen, he broke even into unlimited flow of petroleum in Texas. He just kept going and kept so if you continue if you keep at it you will press through that's always the key word there so i thank god that for those six years i didn't stop i said to myself then i said but i will keep serving him though i served the god that could not deliver you know what i was crying and I, i'll be praying i'll be crying and i will still be praying praying in tongues i will pray for nine hours my whole body burning can you imagine nine hours without even heating my whole body burning nine hours non-stop i just continue Ladies and gentlemen, all the prophetic gifts came on me. The heavens tore open. I started seeing angels. Miracles started. And see, God endowed me with what has taken me this far in life. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So if you continue, ladies and gentlemen, there is a certainty of pressing through. The Lord bless you. Sister Buki, God bless you. In Jesus' name. And, any other contributions? Please give it a volume. Any other contributions? Any other question? Please, God bless us. You can see that the contribution so far has elucidated some answers. Please let us contribute. Good afternoon, Pastor. Afternoon. Yes, sir. This is your Trinity Shino. Oh, okay. And um, the, the part that I actually want to talk about is the timing, the when. You know, it's actually one uh, subject that is not very clear because god would say i've done this or i will give you this or you should do this and 
until one actually gets the timing right, you know, it could actually, just like you also mentioned, that one can actually get into trouble if one does not get the timing right. Or one might not even enter into the promise if one does not know when exactly to, you know, push into what he has said. So it's actually um, a point to to uh, sit more with God to really understand when he actually wants or want to do what he has actually called one into. And um, I pray God will help us. Amen. Amen. Um, this Sister, it's the God bless you. Let me make something clear. A lot of us have heard that when it is faith, God doesn't determine time, you operate by faith on something. It is very true. Do you understand when it comes to faith operations? But you see, faith operations in itself also is subject to timing operations. You must understand that. Like um, a one-year-old child who is believing God to conceive, it's not going to be possible. A five-year-old girl who is believing, please understand, that faith won't work. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is a time for everything. God will tell him, wait, when you are 13, 14, 15, 16, when you start... Uh, whatever you can conceive. So there are timings for certain things, most early as you operate with faith. Faith and time is, 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 is something that we need to understand. Look at, David, um, look at uh, 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 Moses. The Bible said in Acts chapter 7, he supposed that God was going to deliver Israel through his hand. So he started killing the Egyptians one by one. So he, think, he thought by one by one killing, he can deliver Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. And that was not it. You can't, you can't do that. God, God said, no, that's not my time and that's not my method. So God has to send him on exile for 40 years. And then when the fullness of time came, God not released him. But God told him, himself. God came calling. He said, those that seek after you, they are dead. Those that seek after your life. He said, now go back to Egypt and go and deliver my people. I've heard their cries and I've come down to deliver them. Do you understand? Sir? So uh, that, that is the right timing of God for operation. And <laughs> you agree with me. The first time, that Moses tried it, his own life was in jeopardy. This second time, not even a single hair fell from the body of Moses. In fact, Moses was a god in Egypt. A god said, I've made you a god unto Pharaoh. He went there in his capacity as a master over the community. He subdued the community and destroyed the Egyptians completely. So, you see why? He operated knowing the right time. At times, if you go ahead of God, it will be as though God never sent you. That's why missing time, it will be as though God was not there. They would have killed him. They have killed some people like that. They would have said when Pharaoh made an attempt to kill him. So if not for God that, that saved him, he could have died. They have killed some people like that. Because they went out in their wrong timing. But if you had waited for God, God has a plan. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? To, to, to deliver history through him. So a person who misses out on God's time, it will be as though... God never sent you on that errand. Praise God. Yeah, volume. Please, any other contribution, any other questions? Um, I like Gary again. Okay. Um, I, just, I just want to say thank you to... Uh, Sister Bookie and yourself, sir, for um, the exposure you just gave about the waiting time for yourself, six years of waiting. Um, it's, it just reminds me of um, myself. And um, I think I told somebody recently, I was like, I don't think there's anybody that's gotten as much prophecies <laughs> concerning a particular matter as I have, <laughs> because it keeps coming. In fact, the last time I had to tell the person, I said, you know what, I'm tired, because God has been saying the same thing. You don't know how many people God has said the same thing through. Um, but um, coming here, it is, um, it's a thing of strength to see that Somebody like you, which is a father to me, has gone through something like this. And um, um, it gives me strength to persevere and know that God is going to show up. Um, thank you very much sir, for everything. God bless you. God bless you too. God bless you too. Uh, any other further questions and contributions? Is Mommy Thompson there? Mommy Thompson has been running from Zoom. So that I don't call her to talk. Who is this there? Good afternoon. Afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon, ma. 
This is Sammy Hatti dedication, sir. Oh, God bless you. Thank you so much for the thank you thank you so much for the message and teaching of today. Personally, I was actually blessed, and um, it's there are some things that I've actually taken note that I will continually work on them. You know, gradually and gradually. I know as I'm growing daily, I become better and better in my work with God. And part of what you have said that I've actually taken note of is the timing of God. And you said specifically that the timing of God is as important as the plan of God. So in the timing of God, they are specific. So it is it is like moving away from the general and going to the specific but actually it starts from the general i have to understand what god is telling me generally it might not be only to me but generally as as event occurs then if i'm able to understand those those better then i can actually go into the specific of god for my life so that means the timing of God at that time is as important as the plan of God, and which is always unraveling on a daily basis. As understand the how of what God has called you to, do, which is also in line with the timing of God and the plan of God for our lives, moving from general to specific. So, in my personal work with God. I'm craving to be to be more specific in, with what God is telling me also. But I'm taking note of them and and doing them on a daily basis because it is in doing that I get to understand him, revealing more of his plan and purpose for me, not just knowing, not just on time. And most of what I pray for, while we were talking about it, I was just saying, God, mercy and grace, mercy and grace, mercy and grace. That was just what I was praying for. Thank you so much, Pastor. God bless you and strengthen you more and more. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, Sister Sabi, for that. I think uh, you hit a statement that blessed me. That the timing of God is as important as the plan of God. Mm, you can imagine. Look at the case of Moses. Maybe Moses had seen it in dreams. Maybe prophets have told him. Maybe, you know, even the soothsayers in Egypt might have even told him that uh, he would deliver Israel. But you know what? He got it wrong with God, divine timing. May God always guide us to make sure that all our times and seasons are well observed. And we understand what God is saying per time. And then we, we start at the right time in Jesus' name. And all the backings of God will be for us in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a prayer I want to pray for everybody. Once a face is about to open in your life, the Holy Ghost will sensitize you. Amen. In Luke chapter 9, verse 51, the Bible says, And Jesus' gaze was consistently fixed towards Jerusalem. Because it's time, even for that whole thing had come. For, for him to go to Jerusalem and you know go through everything had come. So when the time came, there was a sensitization of the Spirit. Ah. I pray that this is what we will always receive in Jesus' name. Amen. And then a lot of us also, we need to be sensitive not to be controlled by emotions, whether positive or negative emotions, anger, bitterness, malice, whatever, because you will miss out on divine timing when those things, you know, get inside of you. You cannot, be, in fact, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, the Bible says, Ephesians 4.30, the Bible says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit, with which you are sealed unto the day of salvation. How do you grieve the Holy Ghost? The next line. It says, Get rid of all anger, malice, bitterness. You know, uh, this one, that one. You know, unf unforgiveness. It says, Forgiving one another. Uh, forbearing with one another. Forgive one another. Even as God has forgiven you for Christ's sake. So, you see, these things close up the ministry of the Spirit in a man's life. When those things are there, you grieve the Spirit. Most times that is when people say they receive the leading of the Spirit for one thing or the other. Uh, try as much as possible to make sure that that is not how you generate the leading. Uh, if you are angry and that is when you want to slam that person with no promotion or you want to this, you just feel God is leading. Is your anger that is leading you? Or is your clamor or bitterness or whatever or unforgiveness that is leading you? And we've all been there. I've been in that kind of situation severally. 
until God has taught me how to separate my emotions from the leading of the Spirit. So please, let's make sure that we all, you know, um, pay attention to intricate details of His leading. And then we check our hearts and His Spirit will wholly speak to us. In Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Can we take the last contribution before we close up? It's been a great time. The Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. May the revelations and the things we've shared today continue to stick to our hearts. Amen. And the Lord continue to bless us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. It's a great thing. You know, growing up, I didn't have anybody share the gospel with me this way. I imagine if some of these things were taught us when we were young. You know, our own lives, my understanding of God would have been deepened. But you know, we thank God over the years, these are compendiums of what we have learned. What has taken me like 30 years to learn in my Christian work is what I share with you in these one or two meetings. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's work with you. Ken Hagen said, You only need, he said, What he learned in 20 years, you can learn it in just 30 minutes. And that's the truth. So, take it and work with it. The Lord bless us as we work with the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, is the most essential lesson we need to have in our Christian work. They finished uh, Rema Bible uh, school one time, and when they were graduating, Kenegan was charging the students, the graduates. He said, You may forget everything that we ever taught you. He said, But make sure you don't forget how the Holy Ghost leads. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't know what he taught them. I didn't even know how he taught them on how the Holy Ghost leads. I didn't know, but that statement, I heard it, and it blessed me. He said, you mean forget everything I ever taught you. He said, please don't forget how the Holy Ghost leads. If you know that one, you will never miss your savable. The Lord bless and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely. His goodness and mercy do follow us all the days of our lives. And we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout a lot hallelujah. I would advise everybody to please go through these messages again and again. The one of last month and the one of this month. The Lord bless you. These are pillars of Christianity. In fact, I pray I get those messages uh, uh, possibly uh, printed out. And definitely, I will write a book on the leading of the Spirit. These are some of the things you are going to flesh up by the grace of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. Shalom.